Welcome to the regular meeting of the Berkeley Planning Commission. Today is Tuesday, September 24th. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Ms. Schlutau, could you please call the roll? Yes. Commissioner Buckler? Here. Commissioner Murad? Here. Commissioner Richardson? Here. Commissioner Campbell? Commissioner Kempner? Here. Vice Chair Smith? Here. Commissioner Patterson? Here. Commissioner Trotto? Here. Chair Kepelanski? Here. Thank you. Next up, we have approval of the agenda. Does anyone have any changes or additions or motions to approve? One comment. Yes. On page, I guess it'd be two. Uh, <clears throat> halfway down, Commissioner Smith recommended utilizing tinted glass on the south and west windows. There's no point in the north, so not all windows. So that's the minutes. That's the minutes. Four. We, we're oh, I'm sorry, we're on the agenda. I jumped. <laughs> Pardon me. No comment. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Schlutau? Murad? Okay. Yes. Richardson? Yes. Kepner? Yes. Smith? Yes. Patterson? Yes. Trotto? Yes. Buckler? Yes. Kapolanski? Yes. So the minutes, you were saying... I might have a comment. <laughs> Commissioner Smith? Page two, um, regarding utilizing tinted glass on all windows. I don't believe I said that. I didn't watch the video, but it doesn't make sense on the north unless they want it. But it's, it, I, I believe I said south and west windows. That's where they're going to get blasted by the sun. A minor thing. I think that's it. Any other changes, corrections? Or motions? Motion to approve the minutes with one correction. Second. Ms. Schlutau? Richardson? Yes. Kempner? Yes. Smith? Yes. Patterson? Yes. Trotto? Yes. Buckler? Yes. Murad? Yes. Kapolanski? Yes. Okay, moving on to communications. We had several items that were given to us tonight. Um, most of them deal with items that are on the agenda. In fact, all of them do. And most of them deal with public hearings. And then we have one item pertaining to our parking discussion later this evening. Was there anything else that we needed to be made aware of? Not at this time. Okay. Next up, we have citizen comments. Any citizens that have comments for items not on the agenda, we ask you to come forward at this time. Please sign in on the sheet provided next to Council Member Gavin. As a reminder, we will not engage you in any discussion, um, but we will take note of your comments and try to address them throughout the discussion we have as a planning commission. When you come to the microphone, we ask that you state your name and address and keep your comments to four minutes or less. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to comment on an item not on the agenda this evening? Okay, seeing no one then, we will close citizen comments and move on to our first order of business, which is the matter of conducting a public hearing to amend the zoning ordinance Violations from misdemeanors to municipal civil infraction, infractions. Ms. Schlutau, did you have anything to add? Um, I just wanted to reference the September 19th uh, memo from um, City Manager Matthew Baumgarten. Um, this really kind of goes over everything that we discussed in last month's meeting as to why we are changing the, um, the, the penalties for, for any infractions from misdemeanors to civil infractions. Um, this just gives a little bit more explanation to that. And with that, I'll take any questions. Okay, thank you. So this item is a public hearing. At this point, I'd like to open the public hearing. Is there anyone from the public who would like to comment on this item? The same rules would apply about stating your name and address and trying to keep your comments to four minutes or less. Was there anyone who wanted to comment on the municipal civil infraction amendment? No one? Okay, and I don't believe any of our correspondence was related to that either. Um, so with that, I will close the public hearing on that item and open it up to the Planning Commission. Any comments? 
questions? Oh, motion? Chair, I, yes. I'd like to make a motion. I think we discussed this quite thoroughly okay. last uh, month. Um, I motion to recommend to City Council approving the matter conducting a wait, to amend zoning ordinance violations for misdemeanors to municipal civil infractions. And I'm looking for the number. I'm sorry. Um, section 138-551 violations. Second. Um, Any discussion on the motion? Ms. Schluto, could you please call the roll? Kempner? Yes. Smith? Yes. Patterson? Yes. Trotto? Yes. Buckler? Yes. Murad? Yes. Richardson? Yes. Kapolanski? Yes. Okay, moving on to our next item, the matter of conducting a public hearing to recommend zoning ordinance amendments to permit marijuana land uses within the city. Ms. Schluto, do you have anything to add to that? Yes, again, I'd like to reference the September 19th um, memo from City Manager Matthew Baumgarten. Um, this kind of goes into a little bit more detail as to um, why the city uh, has taken the stance that we have uh, about permitting these, um, these uses in the city. Um, the zoning ordinance change um, effectively adds these uses to the zoning district, um, um, and the memo has included a map of the areas that it would be permitted and uh, prohibited. Um, it would be prohibited based on the proximity to schools, um, the 1,000 feet uh, uh, by walking distance, as well as 500 feet measured from the right of way to um, yeah. in any of the uh, gateway entrances to the city. That includes uh, Woodward and 11 Mile, Woodward, um, 11 Mile Catalpa, 11 Mile Greenfield, 12 Mile Greenfield, 12 Mile Coolidge, and 12 Mile at Woodward. Um, one point that was brought up in the previous Planning Commission um, meeting that I would like to address specifically is the interest in moving these to a special land use. Um, this was discussed and debated, um, and we decided that um, by allowing them through a special land use process, it limits the administrative review um, that we are proposing. Um, we are proposing to move these through and collect all of the applications at once, going through a very rigorous um, matrix uh, of regulations, and some of them are uh, available for you on your desk. This would allow us to kind of whittle down some of those applications that uh, maybe are necessarily incomplete or don't fit with the goals and objectives of the master plan, and then those remaining those remaining um, properties that would be eligible for the business license would then be presented to the Planning Commission and you would review their site plan. So you, the Planning Commission would still have um, a review component as part of this process, just not through the special land public hearing process. Uh, the feedback uh, at the previous meeting also brought up the topic of parking for these facilities. Now, parking is something that we're going to be discussing a little later specific to these properties, but we want to, um, these type of businesses, we don't want to label them specifically and say, and, and pr almost prohibit them by the regulations and requirements of a parking, um, of, for, through the parking. We want to look at these like any other type of commercial, retail type of use, um, because that is, what the, the citizens of this community have inevitably wanted. They want these type of businesses, so we don't want to um, prohibit them um, on something such as parking. Um, as we had stated before, there are a maximum of three locations that are proposed to be licensed uh, within the city, so there would only be three parcels at this time that would be able to get these type of licenses. We are looking at um, allowing rooftop licenses, which would um, include several different types of licenses at one location if if an applicant decided to, they wanted to pursue that route but still there would only be three properties three parcels within the entire city that could could obtain these types of licenses uh, Ms. Shelto could you pull your microphone a little closer I I'm very sorry I appreciate the courtesy okay. thank you okay and that kind of summarizes it but okay. I, happy to answer any questions thank you I can't hear you very well <laughs> Sorry. 
Okay, so this item is also a public hearing. We did receive three correspondence related to that. Um, so we have had a chance to review those and those will be included in the record. Is there anyone from the public who would like to comment on this particular zoning ordinance amendment? Okay, with that I will close the public hearing and open it up to the Planning Commission. Ms. Buckler. Yeah, I'm um, a little surprised. I thought we were, f there was, we we're fairly clear with what we, I think as a body requested from Mr. Baumgartner and yourself last month. Um, I disagree completely with having it as an administrative uh, process. Um, I think that the public has a right to make comment on these businesses because they are not just any other business. I'm sorry, they are not. And uh, there will be controversy about where they go. I think the administrative process, the, the criteria, the meritorious recommendations, the meritorious selection, the, the rankings, those could be easily built into the special use designation. Um, that checklist could be referenced and, and or put in there in its entirety, and we can consider those as well. I, um, I frankly, do not believe this belongs just in the administrative hands. I think it's fine to limit the number of them, but then I'm not sure what that does either. If it's, and I'm not exactly sure that it is exactly what the public wanted. They wanted legalized marijuana. That doesn't necessarily mean they want these facilities in their city because there's a lot of other communities that voted at the same percentage as we did and have voted not to have them and have not been repetitioned to allow them in their communities. So um, I think there should be some more constraints on them. We can always revisit after we see how they do, after these investments have been made and, and how they operate, but I, you know, the, and perhaps make it a little bit more open. But at this time, I, 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 this is not at all what I expected to see when we discussed this last month, and now we're up against a deadline, and I feel this is a little bit of dirty pool from the administration because we asked for it to be a special use permit. It came back, we know there's a tight deadline, and I'm frankly very angry that this is what I got in my email box like three days ago or four days ago or whenever I got this, so. Ms. Schlutow, can you maybe explain a little bit how that would limit the ability of the city to select the three developments that would be licensed? Well, if, they, if the applications came forward through the special hearing or special land use in the public hearing, um, we would be beholden to set the public hearing for every application that came through. This would then put um, the responsibility of everything onto the planning commission and making sure that if you're only allowing three licenses, then ostensibly you have to vote on each and every one that would come in, and it could present as a first come, first serve process for those applications that are coming forward, as opposed to the ones that fit more cohesively within the city and the community. So then, does the administration plan on collecting however many applications or over a certain period of months and then determining which three of those should be sent forward? Correct, yes. The the way that it's uh, framed right now is that it would be open for approximately two weeks. Um, there would be a panel of, of city staff, um, including the city manager, myself, um, public works, um, a, a number of us that would review these applications to determine compliance not only with um, the city ordinances as well as the master plan, the downtown master plan um, uh, as presented, and um, what these types of businesses would contribute to the community and what they have contributed to the community. So it would be more of a, a, a system where we look at it comprehensively as that particular property and that particular business rather than um, looking at one at a time and having to vote each and every time. Okay. Mr. Smith? Thank you. <clears throat> Is the license for a facility tied to a particular parcel? I keep hearing those words together. Why wouldn't this, why wouldn't the the applicants, there could be three, there could be 10, there could be 20, apply for their license and that be reviewed and granted by the city, then they find the proper site, which apparently would be reviewed by us. 
Why is that all tied together, or is that all tied together? It is all tied together, and that follows with the, the business license process that is currently in place with any other business. We don't look at just the use. We look at the property, the site, the parcel to make sure it's zoned properly, to make sure there's enough parking. Um, all those things kind of go together. I think Ms. Buckler was referring to our conversation, which was, I'm not, I don't recall if it was unanimous, uh, it but was. it was pretty darn close, um, <clears throat> uh, regarding some kind of a special use. Uh, I want to hear what the neighbors say about these things. Uh, and a special use requires a public notice, right? Yes. I want to hear, you know, like we, we talked about, the, the, the nature of the geometry of our town, these, good, bad, or indifferent, will be next door to someone's backyard or side yard or residence. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of people out here who voted for the uh, recreational marijuana, but all of a sudden, there's, and there's a letter here, it very plainly says, well, I voted for it, but I didn't expect it to be in Berkeley, or I definitely don't want it in my backyard. So there's a big disconnect there, everybody wants it, but we're going to be the ones who decide where to put it, and we're going to piss some people off. I want to hear those people. And I, th I don't know if that came out last month, but I think, I think that's not asking too much um, for this board, or this commission, to hear what the neighbors have to say about it being in next door to their yard. And um, I think we we're rather unanimous on that. Now, we just recommend to the, the city council, yeah. uh, you know, we work for them, but uh, I get the feeling, much like Ms. Buckler, this is really just getting shoved through, and I'm not 100% sure it's been thought out. I know a lot of people thought about it, but I'm not 100% sure that uh, that we want to rush this through. So that's my piece for now. Mm -hmm. Mr. Governor? <coughs> um, I agree that I, I really do think it needs to be a special land use. Um, I believe it's only fair to the residents for them to A, know ahead of time instead of just like seeing it pop up one day. If it goes as a special land use, it comes to us, it goes to city council, they get numbers, a number of times to be heard as to what their feelings are about it. Um, my other question is, is when I look through this, it also says in the wording, um, principal uses in the Gateway District are as follows, and it shows marijuana retailers and medical marijuana provisioning centers allowed in the <coughs> Gateway District, but that's not what your map shows, and that's not what you said earlier, so I'm... Right, so yeah, the the uh, ordinance was uh, changed a little bit to allow certain parcels in the Gateway District um, because the um, the Gateway District, especially at Coolidge and uh, 12 Mile, extends further into the downtown type area, and we wanted to make sure that we could capture some of those um, some of those properties. Um, but we didn't want the first thing that people coming into the community or coming into the downtown, the first thing that they see as a welcome to the community is is a marijuana facility. Why not? Why not? It's like every the other city business. city council wants said. to embrace it. Why not embrace it? You said right. it's like every other We're not arguing business. with you. You're the, unfortunately, the yeah. uh, conduit here. Yeah. So if the city council is pushing to embrace this, why not embrace it? Right. <laughs> Seems kind of contradictory. Yeah. If anything, excuse me, Ms. Ms. Chair, Go if on. anything, something in those corner intersections would probably be furthest away from some of the residential properties. Yeah, absolutely. So quite frankly, putting it over here or over yeah. here would be, you know, I, I hate to say this because I, I don't want to compete for my shawarma, but at Mr. Kebab's would be like a perfect place. It's right next to public safety. No and, brownie points. And you can get, and you no can get a, for that. a shawarma. <clears throat> but I, I, I just think that it, I, I wouldn't, to me, I don't think it matters, and I don't think that's the entrance into our city. I mean, we are over on Woodward, we're up at uh, Webster, I think Webster, yes, correct, and down. So I, I, I don't see any difference, and I think that those those corners uh, could be just fine. So I'm less bothered about that issue. I'm just really bothered about this process um, when I thought we were fairly clear, and I saw nodding, and you come back, and then we get this, and then we get it late, and I'm... A little annoyed. So, okay, Mr. Richardson, but open. Um, I take it that, that with the exception of these uh, parcels and the few parcels in the Gateway District, there's still a um, 
a provision in the ordinance to disfavor locating uh, these types of facilities within 500 feet of uh, uh, any of the main uh, intersections entering Berkeley. Is that, is that still true or has that just been uh, discarded at this point? No, that's still true. Well, can you, I, I don't know how that can be enforced, um, you know? Um, if, if, it's, if, if, if the zoning allows for um, a use and you deny uh, an application for that use within a zoning, uh, a zoned, uh, properly zoned district, then my understanding is that the, the, the applicant can sue uh, the city to, um, uh, you know, to insist that they can be uh, uh, located there. Um, I, I, maybe you could comment on how that would be enforced. Uh, uh, disfavored just seems to me to be a m empty term. Well, we are favoring um, part of the, the, the uh, regulation matrix that we've set up through the administration process is we want to um, en encourage development or redevelopment in some of the parcels or properties that have sat vacant for too long. So we want to encourage those types of things and, and th that type of development. So that's part of our, our administrative process. Um, by discouraging or eliminating properties um, in the gateway within the 500 feet of the entrance to the city, um, that is a similar regulation as a thousand feet from a school. Or um, there are other um, well, it's not uses quite that are you have to be a separation distance from one yeah. fr one business from another. Yeah. So those are type of uh, regulations that we can put in as long as it's fair and it's it's across the board. Well, if, if you really don't want them within 500 feet, I think you should change the language to say uh, prohibited. Um, uh, and then you can make exceptions for uh, whatever um, properties you think uh, are exceptional. Um, getting to the, the, the main point, um, I, to me, the issue that we have is unique, kind of unique to Berkeley. We were just built so so tight, and our lots are so um, are so uh, um, thin. They're just not deep lots anywhere in the commercial areas of town. Um, these facilities are going to be proximate to residents, and uh, um, you know it, it troubles me that. Uh, uh, the neighborhood isn't going to be participating in any meaningful way in, in the decision as to where to locate these uh, facilities. I, I, I lean toward making it a special use. I still don't understand why you cannot uh, use the administrative process to uh, narrow it down to three, th three applicants. Issue them licenses contingent on approval of the special use, and and send them over. I mean, we we have to approve the site plans anyway. We have we would have to do three of those. Uh, you know, this is uh, just adding a public hearing element to um, uh, to the process, and it, it gives the public a chance to to be heard. And I understand. I <laughs> I understand how that can be a two-edged sword. I, I get that, but um, we have to talk about fairness, and even if it's, uh, you know, um, imposes new burdens on this body and on the city council as well. So uh, that's kind of where I'm coming from. I'm looking for a more, a more holistic explanation why we can't do a public, uh, a special use approach. So any comment on that? Because I, I think I have the, the same exact question. Is it the yeah. city attorney's opinion that you can't have both of these processes in place? I mean, the way that we have um, constructed this, 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 appro this approach is that the applicants would submit their, their business license application, um, all of the required documentation that we require, including um, pre-approval from the state. Um, they would have uh, some sort of uh, either contract or, or, or pre-contract with, with the property owner, so they would have a parcel in, in mind for what they want to do. The administration staff would review these applications and based on uh, the rubric that we're, we're, we're proposing, would 
be able to choose the best ones, the, the ones that came the most prepared, the ones that could offer the most to, to the community, and the ones that uh, we feel would fit best with the city of Berkeley. Um, conforming with our master plan, all of our ordinances and the like. Then they would come for the planning commission approval through the site plan application process. If we were to whittle them down, as you say, to the, to the three, and then came before the public hearing, the, the notion that uh, a public hearing could be held and if the public didn't want that, that property, then we're back to square one. Then we have to choose a property that maybe didn't fit all of the criteria, didn't fit all of the master plan. It's, it's, do, it's a, you're, you're, we're reviewing things twice for conformity with the master plan. So we felt if we took care of a lot of that at the forefront, then this planning commission could focus more on the site and the, the, the fit with the community rather than um, the, the fitting with the master plan and the use itself. So how would the process you described prohibit the administration from ranking one through six, let's say? And if, if two or three goes down because there's the special land use component and there's a lot of opposition to a particular property, why couldn't four then step up? As, as we approach this process, it was it, it meant to be more of a streamlined process, so there would be the administrator review and then one review through um, planning commission to try to work with the property owners instead of saying, submit your application, submit all of this, then you have to go through a public hearing, then you have to do all of this. If the use has already been approved through um, through the planning commission and then adoption through the city council, having them go through additional reviews that we've already done in the administrative level um, was was it was an additional additional reviews that we felt that we had had achieved at the forefront. Mr. Patterson, I, I just feel without a special land use or a public hearing, the residents never get an input. An administration is doing it without any input or oversight from our residents, and that's my concern. Ms. So a couple of things. One, you brought up, um, and, and Mark, I, you, you said that it you know, would come for site plan review. That's not necessarily the case. We gave the administration administrative review capabilities. We expanded those, what, maybe six months ago? So they have a, a slightly expanded administrative review. I'm, I'm pretty sure it would be unlikely that one of these facilities would not trigger uh, a normal site plan, but they do have expanded administrative review capabilities. We did give them that. I don't think this should be streamlined that well. I don't think it should be that easy, and I don't see why you can't make the application to include all the meritorious, whatever, minimum requirements that you want, just like we have for a site plan application. You need to have a plan, and it needs to be this big, and it has to be stamped, and you have to have a signature, and you have to have a fee, and you have to have this. So now add, I want this, I want this, I want this. And if you don't meet these things, it doesn't warrant, you know, coming into Berkeley. It's simple. Just put it on the app form. And then it comes for the special use, just like a, when they go to do a special use application, there's a certain minimum number of information or pieces of information that we need. Just expand it for these types of facilities. And if you're only going to have it open for two weeks, it's not likely to burden us. And I think there's some issues with like rental property versus owning the property. We can make that a requirement, like you must own the property. I don't know, I mean, you can do whatever, you, you can, there's a lot of flexibility I think you have as a city, and you can do that pre-screening. So if it doesn't meet the minimum requirements, we should never see it anyways. And you should not be even considering it because it didn't meet the application. It's like an online form. You don't fill out a thing, you can't get it through, so simple. I, I don't know why we're making this so much more complicated than it has. I'm just very uncomfortable. And I think, I'm going to suspect, I'm going to say something, but I suspect there's a lot of people in the audience who may not trust the administrative review process after some of the things that have happened in the city in the past year. Has there been any thought to including some other sort of public hearing component? If there's, if there's not an appetite to consider this a special land use, which I tend to agree it kind of should fall under, that it's a different business type than other businesses we have in the city. Is there any thought to including some other sort of public involvement component, an administrative public hearing, something else to at least garner some sort of information from the residents who might be next to this business? I don't know if that has been, uh, if that has been discussed. Okay. 
Don't we, from this end of the table, Mr. Murad? Don't we require drive throughs to be a special use? Yep. Yes, because Being it could impact the neighbors. Right. That, that, that's very similar situation. It's a very similar situation. And we <laughs> review those all the time. So. It's, it's going to be a hot button topic, right? Either way. I think we all are very aware of that, but I think it's highly unfair to the community and the residents to pretend like they shouldn't have any opinion on it or shouldn't be able to express any opinion on it. And the idea of just waking up one day and seeing that this is what's popped up at the end of the street and you didn't know, I feel like the backlash is going to be 8,000 times worse like that than to know what's coming, to see it, to be able to express your concerns, and I, I just feel like it's a bad idea. Yeah, I, I tend to agree, but and I think that the merit system that's set up here is also of value and is important. We want to make sure that the types of businesses that are coming are the best type of marijuana provisioning center that we, we could get. We don't want the ones who maybe don't have their act together and aren't contributing as much to the community. So that needs to be included somehow. But I think what you're hearing in general is hearing from the public is very important to this commission. And we want to see some kind of component where their opinions are taken into account. Mr. Smith? Yeah, I watched the uh, city council meeting yesterday and today um, on YouTube, and there was a big issue regarding batting cages that was sprung on the local residents. And there were, a lot of residents were very upset. And then between that and the city council after that, they spent a good part of an hour talking about uh, better communications with the city and the residents and citizens. And here we are, <laughs> here's something that's about as controversial as I would think you could get. There's others. And as written, it's not affording the residents, especially the next door residents, an opportunity to speak much less, maybe not even be aware that is happening next door to them. Yeah. And I think that kind of flies in the face with what city council talked to, talked about a week ago. How do other communities handle the, the medical marijuana businesses that are currently out there? Recreational marijuana. Well, well but no, medical is out there, right? There. right. So how, how does Ferndale do that? Ferndale, they... They have a couple of, um, they have one property that's open as far as I know, and they've got a couple of other ones. Uh, theirs was on a first come, first serve basis. Um, so they had people waiting out line. If they came in and if they met the criteria of their business license, they were permitted by right. That's medical though. Right, but I haven't, wondering. yes, they haven't, um, they're working through their, their uh, recreational adult marijuana provisions right now. Are there other er communities in the area that, that currently do medical marijuana? Does anyone have a system set up like this for medical marijuana? I believe Hazel Park does, and unfortunately, Commissioner Campbell isn't here, but they had run into a number of hiccups when they when they um, instilled the, the requirement for the special land use. Um, there were a lot of... Um, as you noted, there were a lot of people that came in and said that they didn't want this, they didn't want this. However, um, they were bombarded with applications. They had 50, 60 applications that they had to, to weed through and do at, at every single meeting. Okay. Are there cities around, sorry. No, go ahead, Mr. Smith. Are there cities around that have gone through the process with recreational marijuana? Or are we trying to be the first ones? We're one of the first ones. There are, are there others other? that are, there are others that, uh, you know, Royal Oak is starting their process. There are other communities that I've spoken with. They're actually looking to, to Berkeley to see how, see what we do and see what works. <laughs> well, so okay. we set the standards. That's not the good answer. Um, <coughs> so remind us of the, the timeline of all of this. I understand the state's going to start issuing licenses. Is January. it in November, December? January 1st. January 1st. Okay. Um, in our ordinance, I would assume we would want in place prior to that. Correct. We are, we're looking to be accepting applications January 1st. And this has to go through two readings at City Council? Yes. It's September. So I would think that leaves us a little bit of wiggle room. <coughs> Is that correct? 
The timeline is very tight because we want to make sure that we have enough um, time to get our applications finalized. Um, we want to make sure that we have enough time to get our ordinances set in place and um, for the, the public, the applicants, to have time to get their um, their ducks in a row, their applications set, their their businesses picked, their their uh, site plans finalized. We don't want to um, set a, a standard of, of you know the the, the deadline to, to do all this is December first, and we're accepting applications December third, and you have to go now. So we want to make sure that we give them sufficient time to get their their applications and their information. Do we have to start accepting? Yep. Applications on January 1st? Well, City Council has set the timeline. That's when yeah. everything, they, they have a set timeline of when they want everything. And what was the rationale behind making sure that we were there right when the door opens? Like, why not wait till February so that we can have a little bit of time to sort this out and make sure it's Mr. Babin. Do, do you know what the rationale was for the, the, the quick timeline? I'm sorry, I don't. I believe it was just to not drag it out. So we were trying to set a very exact timeline so that it kept moving and didn't just kind of And I can appreciate yeah. that, but we need enough time to do a thorough. No, I would agree. So, so my question, and my question is both to Ms. Uh, Mr. Gavin, um, could we not extend our ordinance that currently sunsets, I think, on December 31st to February 28th to give us a little bit of breathing room? I mean, I, I that get, I think we all are under the impression that we're going to have them, but we want to do them right. We don't want it. I don't think the public wants it streamlined either. I think they want the right properties. I'm looking up Hazel Park had a lot of issues with their process, which is a little bit like our process from the way I'm reading their application as well as their outline. And there was there was a lot of heartburn around the administrative side of it. So and there were lawsuits filed which is what I'm a little bit afraid of on ours too. So having it a little bit more open in the process, in, you know, as a special land use, I think gives the input for the residents and citizens of Berkeley and the business owners of Berkeley, as well as um, us a, t a time to do this thoughtfully. So I'm not sure what the machinations of all that is to extend an ordinance or while well, we just have to revise the date on the ordinance and have yeah, a and hearing and would have to think so. I don't know, but I, Mr. Murad, were you done? Ms. Just, I'm, look, I'm looking at the calendar, and I know council does two meetings a month, first and third Mondays. Even if we didn't approve this until November, our November meeting, they still would have two readings to adopt it. Right, but I think Ms. Schlutow's comment is that the staff then needs the appropriate amount of time to get everything in order. I understand. And the applicants but as well. e I mean even if we have, if we we voted on this in October that still gives them two months to finish it up when was this plan to go to council if we were to make a recommendation this evening was it to go to the next council meeting yes October 7th October 7th so yeah. that is <coughs> okay um, I, I go ahead I feel like you can do both. Like, I feel like there's got to be a way where you can, the city can, in essence, pre-approve, like with a mortgage, right? When they tell you, this is how much we're going to, you know, it, there has to be a way where you guys can pre-approve applicants and then send them to us so that we can give the proper thought and public opinion and all of that. I, I can't see why both can't work. So did the city attorney say that those processes could not both exist? I haven't had that conversation with him. I don't know if uh, anyone else on the city staff has. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. I Hayes. just feel like we're rushing this tonight even w with ours. And so I agree that maybe we could ask council if we could have a delay for our decision or our recommendation to them. I mean, we just got this a couple days ago reading through it and it's not really fair on our part or the part of the citizens to rush this. Well, and I think part of the issue is I don't think there's anywhere near the votes that would be needed to recommend it as as written. Um, I don't know what the feeling of the Planning Commission would be on having a potential special meeting to accommodate the accelerated timeline. Um, it, obviously, it wouldn't make it to the October 7th council mm -hmm. meeting, but it would only be delayed one meeting then. Uh, what kind of time, <coughs> what does that do to you the council and the administration, if we were to delay this to the 
the second meeting in October of Council and entertain the thought of having a special meeting of the Planning Commission for this item. Well, it does put put back and it does delay the, the timeline of when everything was going to start. So we, we the city staff and the city council had uh, agreed upon this type of timeline in order to, to make sure that we had sufficient time to review all the applications uh, before everything went live to, to the, the interested parties. They had sufficient time to get their applications in order um, and then we could start receiving applications the first of the year. Okay. Madam Chair. Yeah. Mr. Richardson. Uh, if, if we uh, table this till the next meeting, what are we going to discuss at the next meeting? Well, right. I would be interested to know, question one is, why can there not be this merit system process and also the special land use process? I guess that's my so first we're, question. we're looking for more information from administration. That's the... That, that's, yeah, question that's number one, matter. I think. Okay. And then beyond that, if the answer is, for some reason, some sort of thing in the law or something like that that says those two processes cannot exist simultaneously. Um, my concern is that we're still going to be sitting where we are right now. Yeah, I, I'm, you know, I mean, I'm open to receiving information and I'm, I'm op trying to be open minded about this, this, uh, uh, this, this resolution. If I had to vote tonight, I would vote no. Yeah. But uh, so my preference would be to table it, but only if we if we further dialogue with the ad administration, get more complete answers to our questions, and, and can have a productive discussion the next time. Mr. Baumgarten, do you want to jump in at all? Brought in the big guns. So our, our main question, I guess, is first of all, we're concerned as a body in general that we're not getting any public in input as part of where these businesses are located. And the site plan process, while it does allow for people to comment on things, doesn't really allow for us to adequately notify everyone that might be in the area. So our question is, and we see the, the merit, I think, in this criteria, and we definitely want to get the best businesses that are available. Why can we not do the merit system criteria and also the special land use? Sure. Uh, the internal conversations, and, and please keep in mind, uh, Planning Commission could still make a recommendation for special land use as part of its uh, action this evening as well as addressing um, any other issues that they have a concern with as well. So the, uh, the issue that we were discussing internally and trying to get as much feedback as possible was sort of running through the different scenarios there. Uh, putting it through a special land use, there are special land use, as you recall, has very specific and defined uh, standards by which the body would, the, the uh, planning commission would make that uh, determination and then on to council. Um, one of them is simply not um, just public outcry. And so uh, the concern was, it, was there a different way that we could uh, accomplish the feedback mechanism so that people within a certain radius, uh, some, some kind of enhanced standard for notification so that people know that this is going on near them, uh, but don't want to give them the impression that uh, mere opposition to the proximity to their home is, uh, I don't want to give the false expectation that that is one of the standards that's built into this. Uh, therefore, Planning Commission and City Council could be in a situation where um, People are, are just displeased it's near them, but ultimately have to make a ruling based on the, the five standards. Right. And so, um, and I don't want to give anyone this t the sense that, um, that, that despite the fact they're here, despite the fact they're, they're upset, um, they were ignored because it simply wasn't the, one of the standards. So that's where we, uh, that was our concern. Again, a planning commission could still make the recommendation to council that this does still become a, a special land use, uh, we just need to make sure that we're very careful in, in managing expectations on what um, coming to the podium and saying your piece was. Uh, it may, the advantage there could be uh, if somebody comes up to it and, and, and then doesn't say, hey, I just don't like this because it's near my house, but, uh, you know, members of the planning commission, here are the standards, it's, it's one, two, three, four, five. But, you know, and, I, and they can go through each one of those standards and say, here's why I don't think this particular location meets those standards. So there are definitely pros and cons to each. Uh, we just didn't want to put Planning Commission in the situation of uh, yielding great outcry and having to make, uh, again, an unpopular decision um, based on finite standards. Well, so that, you that's, know, that, that's uh, what I know. It, it, we're here for. That's what yeah. we're here for. Sure. <laughs> and we that. appreciate that concern. Um, and I, th I think we could probably weed through 
what is just general opposition to a use that maybe is not something that most people would want to see in the community versus if it's adversely impacting the properties around it. I, I think as a commission, we feel confident in judging that standard. And we understand, um, I think, and appreciate that maybe the administration and council was not trying to put us in a difficult position, but I think what you're hearing in general is we want to be in that position, that we, we do want to hear from the residents. Um, and certainly any recommendation this evening could reflect that, and we, uh, the, the timeline would give us an opportunity to um, incorporate that recommendation into the zoning text that will go before council. So if we were to recommend this, um, as uh, as written basically except for as special land uses instead of as principal permitted uses that would not negate this merit system evaluation is that correct no an applicant would just uh, merely have to to go through both uh, I would still advocate for uh, a initial administrative process which whittles down uh, the what we expect to be uh, many many applications uh, and then have there be an administrative threshold that somebody must meet to even progress to the point where they're coming before this body. And I, uh, I that, that's why we'd like problem. to keep the, um, almost unchanged from the previous. Yeah. So that was, that that was what I suggested <laughs> you before you came in. There's no reason this can't be this list of requirements or point system can't be part of the application process. So pick out your most important items and make sure they have them. And then there could be things that are either or. You must have one or two of three or whatever. You can design that. That's pretty easy to do, I think. And that way, if it doesn't check all the boxes, you're done with it. Yeah, it goes to the recycle bin. And yeah, the we, next applicant you look at, and they've got it. And I, I mean, you do that now with other, with a site plan application. Sort of, it should yes. come to us thorough. Right. All you do is adjust that application accordingly so that you get what you need out of it and then it comes to us. I, I right, but I'm not I'm talking about more than just having like the special land use standards and I'm then not you guys get about everybody. That. Okay. I'm talking right. about specific to these types of you you know, if you're uh, if you have electricity, then you have electricity standard. I mean, you can do this. I don't know that any additional ordinance needs to be met. I don't think we write what the application has to look like for some things. Or if we have to bake it in, we'll bake it in. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's going to be that hard. So what I think you're getting at is there's maybe ways, and you might have a different idea of how to do this merit system criteria. I guess we, we don't really care how you guys do the merit system criteria. We're mostly concerned with just the special land use provision. The merit system pertains to license, the issuance of a license, am I right? Uh, there, are, there are several site standards in there as well. Yeah, so, so I mean, that's that's purely administrative. Um, we just add, add another component to Right, uh, even under the, the, the yeah. text that you have in front of you here before is the administration only makes a recommendation yeah. for a group to move forward to the site plan review and then no license is granted locally until uh, that site plan Correct. is granted and then they must go back to the state and, and complete the process with the state. Correct. So to c just to confirm, I think I've already asked this a couple times, but I just want to make sure, if we put in the special land use, we're not setting ourselves up to be a first come, first serve community. We would still retain the authority to go through and rank applications, correct? That's, yes. Okay. okay. Um, I have a question. Yeah, Mr. Trout. During the introduction of this whole situation here, she mentioned rooftop unit, uh, sorry, rooftop ability for outdoor smoking, I'm assuming? Mm -hmm. No, those, no, that's just the, the licensing. So uh, uh, we're allowing three parcels to have licenses. Mm -hmm. However, each parcel could have more than one license. Well, my, my, my biggest so one, you mentioned rooftops. What exactly that's do you just mean rooftop rooftop? Licensing, oops, Sorry, rooftop licensing, so you could have one on top of another. That's just the way that, that yeah, yeah, the so term that's so been not, called. Not rooftop it's not yeah. rooftop. There's I'm no thinking rooftop, like a rooftop bar is going to happen? No, no, no. No, 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 no. no, no. I, I, apologize. I apologize. <laughs> that, that there are height ordinances. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. No, so uh, within a specific address specific, there would be three uh, addresses that would uh, be permitted under this process. If there are additional uses, if, say, somebody would first recommend or uh, uh, move through our lice, our uh, process here as a medical applicant. Mm -hmm. And while they're getting their recreational uh, licensing squared up with the state, they'd be able to add that use uh, at a later date through, through a process without it being competitive. Mm -hmm. Likewise, if they were to um, perhaps expand into a different field, uh, say they want to do limited growth or they want to become a micro business, um, they would, under that rooftop, 
in that location, they would be able to uh, move through a process that may yield uh, them being able to expand their production. Ms. Chair. Yes. Ms. Oh Wolfram. my gosh, I have so much heartburn on the rooftop concept because they're going to get approved for a certain business and it's going to have certain requirements for access and parking and occupancy and yada, yada, yada. So then we're going to add another one. And like, what are they gonna do? And I'm not a, I'm not the, I'm not like a big wonk about parking. I think there should be adequate parking, but not over parking. But then you're gonna add another business. And then if you add a third and a fourth and a fifth, now and it's gonna have 20 employees. So which I mean aren't gonna be there all at once. It's gonna have at least, at least that's your thing. So now we have a lot of cars, and we approved it. So does it have to go back through site plan yes, review? Yes, ma'am. They would have it to does. move back through our process and be able okay. to satisfy all the city standards. Not administrative, but actual right. site plan. Correct. Is it they a would, special uh, use? They would again? run. They would run back through the entirety of the process. No, I don't. I, it's not carte blanche to keep you know no, add I, what you want. It depends on on what uses that you you reference in, in the special use ordinance. If you've referenced all of those different li types of licensures, I think that that's fixed. That uh, that. Uh, uh, once that's approved, um, you don't have to go through special use to get a different kind of license, but you, you may have to go through site plan again to, to modify the, the operation. I, I, I think yeah. that's I how that would I would think go. it would be dependent on how their special use is granted. If it's granted only as a grower facility, right. and then they want to be a processing facility, I guess we would defer to you and the city no. attorney to yeah. determine whether or not they would they have, have to, to. They would have to amend their application to include the new uses. If it's if we're going the special land use route, they would have to essentially reapply to amend their special land use. Uh, just like we talked about, process should start all over again. There should be should be administrative and uh, oversight from the planning commission on that. Ms. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so. Do you think sorry, that that's likely to happen? But, sorry. Ms. But I thought the application process was only or was only going to be open for a couple of weeks. So now but we're you're piling on. I get it. We're setting this in place is. for the, a long time, right? I mean, a business yes. could close, a new applicant could come forward. But then are we opening the window well, again for 20 more applications? And then what happens when you get the one? And it's like, okay, I want to add two, three, four to my my space. And there was some applicant who was like, well, I was going to come in with four of them right away, oh, and I didn't have this. I think I'm just I'm just wondering. Like, I, I see a lot of. Um, but that's oh, getting into some of the yeah. the things they have to worry about. I no, mean, in we this don't. ordinance, we're not concerned with that. If we're going to stick to principle. Uh, th th that isn't changing the okay. principle of public input, and, okay. and uh, uh, you know that isn't going to change no matter how many times we have Agreed. to go through it. Um, and I, I kind of think we're dreaming up a lot of different uh, worst-case scenarios at this point. And we can always tweak things. Uh, and I was, I was, Madam Chair, I was going to mention something like that. We're uh, while not new to other states this we're looking at the kind of the birth of an industry here in michigan and so i do anticipate we will have to address and readdress the text of the ordinance as uh things to clarify through case law as some best practices start to come up uh, but we are in the somewhat difficult situation of trying to predict a number of different potential outcomes and uh protect ourselves our residents and, and our process against that so um we we do want to <coughs> We do want to make sure that we have processes in place that could yield outcomes that we hadn't anticipated, but um, I don't want to be in a situation where you know we have to say no simply because um, there's no text of that ordinance. There should be, and all, like all things, there should be the ability to um, take an application and send it through a process. Whatever it yields, it yields, but I think we should have a process in place that could uh, at least handle the intake portion of it. Does any other, are there any other questions from members of the commission? Mr. Smith? I'm just going to ask a basic question, and just because I'm sure there's a lot of citizens in this audience and a lot of citizens in Berkeley, I feel this way. I will say again, I have no horse in this race, okay? The burden should be on the business. <clears throat> With all the unknowns, you mentioned a few, the state law isn't settled, it's still illegal federally, why does Berkeley want to be the first one? Why are we pushing this? I'm just asking. And I'm sure other people feel the same way. Why are we pushing it? 
through the chair. Uh, we did, we went through, uh, I'm pretty proud of the process that we went through to try to get the, uh, as much input from the residents as possible. And uh, what that ultimately yielded was a majority of residents saying, we, we don't want to close the door to this right away. Uh, as you recall, we had um, looked at opting out right after the vote was taken. Uh, between the first and the, the timeline for when the second reading would have happened, there was there was a outcry from the community to really take take the opportunity to examine this and whether this is where we want to go. So, through a series of uh, public input sessions, surveying, um, you know, re just talking to residents day in and day out, um, ultimately it it yielded a majority of people that said um, this should be something that we should be entertaining. So that was the um, the city council asked the administration to move forward on that. Okay, well, I'm not satisfied. I mean, <clears throat> was one of the questions is, would you mind having one of these in your back or next to your backyard? I mean, and again, we hear that. I hear people in the audience. You know, it's one thing to say I'm all for it, and a lot of people are. But I don't want it in my, I don't want it next to me. And that, that really dwindles the number of people who really want it when they realize due to the geometry of our town, it's going to be next door to my house or somebody's house. So I don't know if that was ever addressed. Everybody, rah, rah, let's do it. But it's got to be put someplace. Yeah, and, and I don't know if that was addressed. And uh, Mr. Chair, uh, you know, that's why we've been putting out these maps and, okay. and setting okay. up I'm feedback for it. I, I do want to make sure that people realize that. Uh, it was, you know, we, we, we talked about this uh, at several of our public sessions is Berkeley has a very shallow commercial district surrounding it. Uh, and even on Coolidge sort of uh, moving through the center almost, um, that it is a, a real likelihood that someone will back up to it's one of these businesses. Almost a certainty. At, you know, yeah. at least three homes will back up yep. to, to these to this uh, use for sure. Okay. Hey, Marty. Mr. Chano? Um, unofficially, I did my own Facebook poll. And overwhelmingly, people were for it. And I pretty much used the words, would you want this in the, at the end of your street? And I think it was almost two-thirds to one-third were for it. Okay, now that's an unofficial thing on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure some people have saw it. Now it got into some heated debates. I mean, literally, people had to step in and stop people from insulting and fighting over it. And I, I think it is true. Some people are going to be the ones. <laughs> some people had to step in. <laughs> um, some people are not going to want it in their backyard. There's no doubts about it. But unfortunately, I don't think we're going to have an option to say, just because it's in your backyard, I can't force it not to happen. And okay. as, part of the, as part of the city of Berkeley and being part of the planning commission, we're the ones that have to make the decision of saying, unfortunately, just because you live right behind it, I can't tell them no. And that, to me, is something that I personally don't feel comfortable with. And no, I definitely don't want it in my personal backyard. If you wanted to put it in somebody's backyard that doesn't care, that's fine. But how do you go about finding a location where the person or the five people who live behind it or the ten people who live behind it don't care? We deal with that every day or every month with zoning. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. exactly what and we're... I'm in doing. a position where I, I don't know what to say about it. Um, I'm still yet to determine if this is just strictly retail or if it's going to be a retail with a smoking option to it or if it's going to be... It can't be smoking. It can't be smoking? No. no. The way it's written State now, no one's like consumption. But who's to say these people don't just walk outside, walk down the street and light up? They're, they're, they're breaking, breaking the law. Already. They're breaking yeah, the law. Yeah, they're breaking the law. Yeah, yeah but it doesn't happen as much. I mean, just like somebody somebody with somebody somebody walks out with with an adult beverage, cracks it open and starts strolling down the street, they're they're breaking the law. Yeah. Right. <coughs> so, yeah, these, are, these aren't going to be facilities where people consume it or smoke I mean, it. I, I, I drove by Live over in Ferndale, and I'll be honest, it, it's a reputable, clean-looking facility. That is something that I would not mind seeing. I definitely think it would be interesting to have in our city. Am I, am I for it? Yes. But how do I do it so that everybody's happy at the same time? I don't uh, think yeah. we're going to be able to do that here. No, we're not. Yes, no. But I do think we could at least control oh, no. some of the scenario and discuss it methodically and as an educated group. And I, I do think the public should have a lot of opinion and a lot of input into this. 
Um, the other thing is, is the way it's being built and the way it's, you know, the way that it's designed, I think definitely should be something to be thoroughly critiqued. I mean, I, I think like I made the comment before, and somebody even noted it here, an eight mile establishment is definitely something we don't want to see in our city. We're not gonna see that. It, it should be something that's, you know, classy and clean. And uh, yeah, I've, I've done some looking into some of the areas. I mean, the, the green genie is not what I want to see here. Live would be something that's more cleaner and nicer to look at. So it's, it's a, something that's, I think as a special land use, we can sit there and kind of critique and massage and something that's you know, correct, whereas I think if it just goes through administration, we're going to get what we get. Well, uh, uh, Commissioner, that's one of the reasons why the site plan was absolutely vital to this process. It was going to have to absolutely come to this this city or, or this uh, body. There is, uh, we don't, I think we're, we're aligned in the type of aesthetics that we want to see in mm -hmm. here. And our one of our best ways of guaranteeing that is this body and the site plan review that um, that this body is, is well versed in, in implementing. Uh, that's that's one of the ways that we're going to get to the point where um, the elevations need to be consistent with the community, uh, the look of it, the, um, the, the not just the building, but the parcel in general. Uh, all those things need to be thoroughly reviewed by somebody more than administration. I'll, I'll be the first to say that. That's why we built site plan into this process. And as as a standard, you're not you're not even issued your license locally until you you get past that point. So uh, it's not even that administration is granting anything. It everything is contingent upon site plan approval. Uh, Mr. Richardson. Um, Mr. Baumgarten, we do we do prefer uh, this body to make a decision tonight, even if that decision is to. Um, uh, authorize this as a special use as opposed to tabling it for further uh, information from the administration as we discussed earlier what what would be your uh, preference on that? so uh, the process that we've sketched out here in order to make the the end of we have a moratorium in place right now that uh, prohibits this until the December 31st essentially uh, so the process that we have sketched out would be it uh, from here it goes to City Council uh, with a recommendation the, for a first reading, incorporating the recommendations from Planning Commission. And then after the first reading, we built in um, an extended period of waiting time where we can, again, continue to accept uh, all the public feedback possible before the um, before the November 18th is the last opportunity we have. Keep in mind that anything that the council uh, passes has a 30-day effective date. And so November 18th, uh, if the second reading and approval happens that evening, then we have that 30 days for it to come into effect. And then essentially the city's protected uh, at the end of the moratorium, which is, so we have uh, even built into this process, we have extended wait periods. Uh, if you were to wait a month, then council would have to take action to amend the, the moratorium or the ordinance language that has the sunset on it. So I don't know, it, it sounds like basically that People are generally comfortable with the district's proposed. It's just the special land use portion that needs to change. Yeah. So, well, it's pretty much every district except residential. Yeah. So I don't know that we. Does anyone feel like they they would not be prepared to vote on something this evening if this were changed to special land use instead of principal? Are there other outstanding items or questions you'd like to see addressed? I have Ms. one Kempton? more question. Um, so a special land use generally runs with the property, right? So if somebody decided that this business wasn't working for them and a new one wants to go in, this process doesn't necessarily start all over again? They would still have to go through the application process uh, and we would recommend that they come back before the planning commission. That needs to be worded to, to make that the case. And so we, we would need to address that as an additional protection under the uh, recommendation. Ms. Brock. Yeah, I want to go back to the map. Um, again, I, I don't think that these intersections should necessarily be excluded. Okay. I mean, I don't think 12 and Coolidge should be excluded. I don't think 11 and um, Woodward should be excluded. I don't think 12 and Woodward should be excluded, frankly. Or I don't. I, I mean, I really don't see the difference of excluding them unless they're within a distance from the schools. Um, I think those are some reasonable properties to consider. And why are we taking them off the table? Um, and I don't know that CVS is like, I mean, it, it's, it's a good store, but it's not no like go. this beautiful entry, you know, fancy. It's a CVS. No yeah. So I don't know that we have such celebrated gateways that something like but this can be. Let's, 
keep in mind too we, we have the downtown master plan that's on a little a little bit later this evening we have the design guidance guidelines still floating out there i mean they do talk about creating more of a gateway into the city sure well, more well, than what is a beautifully it is designed and store why not right <laughs> right that's what it's all about yeah. welcoming I, well, it doesn't 12 matter. and woodward is out because of shrine it's cool oh yeah yeah that's what's okay. been I guess if the city council wants to, you know, 500 feet is the gateway, is it effectively, delete it, delete the gateway then. That's what they're saying. They're, you know, they're asking for disallowed from the gateway. Disallowed from the gateway. Yeah, because yeah. it says it both ways in here. So and, what, uh, why was it listed so as preferred or not? The gateway preferred? district is, uh, I would, I would say, inconsistently administered. Uh, like the sit, there's a at 12 and 12 and Coolidge. Uh, you've got a gateway district that extends all the way over to halfway in the, the block between uh, at, at Kipling, and it's it doesn't affect it doesn't affect all entry gateways. Uh, they weren't all put under that zoning district, so that was the reason why we had a distance standard from very specific intersections instead of just saying the district itself is out because it doesn't cover all, it doesn't cover everything. And where it is applied, it, it's applied well into the what we would consider sometimes the downtown area even. So Ms. Buckler's comment was that she doesn't see a need to exclude it from those major intersections. Does anyone else have any thoughts on that? I feel the same way. Mm -hmm. yeah. is, the, is the language uh, disallowed or disfavored? So I think it said not preferred yeah. or something like not that. Not preferred. I, I don't know how you enforce that anyway. But it's an allowable use. That's yeah, allowable use. Uh, is that part of then the merit system criteria? That it, that it preference the portion would be? Yeah. It could be added that uh, somebody would uh, and uh, I guess the inverse, you'd say, so not being within a proximity, yeah. you just wouldn't get points, or you would get points for not being in a proximity, as opposed to just writing into the or text of the ordinance that it's disallowed or disfavored. It seems like if that's the feeling of the administration, that's the more appropriate place for that. So we're kind of at a point here where we either recommend approval or denial of the ordinance as written, table as written, or recommend approval with some changes. What is the wish of the commission? I, I think there's too many changes for me to be comfortable recommending it, quite frankly. I would want to see it written the way that we asked for it the last time because I'm recommending something I haven't seen and I'm not comfortable. So what specific changes would that be? Well, I want to see it all as site, I want to see it all as special land use, not just change out the words, special land use. And I also would like to see a reference to this in, in that and that it has to meet it. I think that needs to be part of the completion process and, and, and an ordinance that's voted on because until such time, this is just administrative and the public has no input on it. The citizens and residents have no input on it as to what's a priority in the city. And I think this needs to be part or referenced into that process um, so that people can tell us what they think is important about these stores. I don't know what the administration thinks is important versus what we think is important versus what this gentleman over here thinks is important and this lady over here thinks is important. I don't Look know. That should be open for discussion. I, I, Looking I, at this, I, sorry, Mr. Richardson, go um, ahead. I'm not sure about the legality of going that far. Well, I'm not I'm not. I don't know I, if I don't we either. can amend uh, I tend to agree. the uh, criterion that's in the law for special land uses. Mm -hmm. By, you know, and this, those this list of standards, just looking at it for a business to come in and meet every single one of these seems unlikely. Well, I, I didn't say this is the final list. I, I, right. I'm not sure what it is. This is the first time we've seen this. I, right. Mr. Baumgarten? So the intent is to have a point system uh, associated with each of those standards, and that would allow administration to score. We don't anticipate somebody meeting all of them either. Uh, but we would ha incentivize those standards with a set of points. They would count backwards from top to bottom, and then um, that, that would help us sort of rank them in a way that, that helps us deliver a recommendation to, to this body to move forward. So you're correct that they won't rank all of them. And, uh, and through the chair, uh, we don't shy away from having public input at all. Those standards sit on the city's website right now. Uh, they're a public document. They're out for anyone to take a look at and render feedback for. So, uh, like I say, in no way are, are we not in, uh, anticipating there to be public input on that. We, we put it on the website specifically for that purpose. So, 
I think I tend to disagree, Michelle. No, that's fine. Um, I, I, the special land uses, I think, make a lot of sense. I like the idea of keeping these two systems separate. I don't want to have to weed through each and every one of these, and I don't feel like it's in our purview as the Planning Commission to do that. I, I would like the administration to bring to us the three applications that they think best meet their merit system criteria, and then we look exclusively at the special land use criteria. So I would be prepared to support a uh, recommendation this evening as long as principal uses was changed to special uses. What is the feeling of the rest of the commission? I'm, I'm in agreement. So am I. I am too. I would also like to see the gateways open, though. <laughs> yep. Mr. Patterson? I, I agree with Commissioner Buckler. I think there's too much going on. I, I think we need to have it written the way we want to recommend it not just change one word. I like the gateways being opened. I think there's um, too much right now, and if it pushes back a month or we have to have a special meeting, I think that's more than appropriate. We shouldn't be rushing through this. Um, I have one more point. Yes, um, so the public meeting, the, the, we had a public hearing on this, and it was under a completely different form than we would be recommending it at this point. So if it That's was in true. a different form when it was in the public hearing, I'm curious to know whether there would be any comments on this and what that looks like. And I feel like we've squelched the voice of the residents by saying, okay, you didn't have any comments. Now we're going to rewrite this and submit it back to city council unless you open it back. I don't know if you open it back up. I don't know the machinations so, for that. So. My, I guess, argument with that would be that if we were to change it to special land use, we'd be making it more restrictive, not less restrictive. But, uh, my, that might trigger a comment, though, I'm just saying. It, it could. Well, That's a fair fair point. I don't think there's any obligation on us to have another public hearing if we if we change uh, the, the, the resolution. I think we have the right to do that. We're in the public forum right now. Okay. And, and um, you know, uh, we didn't hear any recommendations from the public to do that, but Correct. they could have. Yep. <laughs> they had the opportunity. Okay. Um, Fair enough. I, that's my informal opinion. <laughs> okay. Yes, Mr. Murad. I'm not going to start. I'm rereading item E of the. Uh, of uh, section 113 to 528 about the marijuana business regulations and that's the one that talks about the gateways and it says prefer so it doesn't say prohibits okay right so prefer, yeah. i think we can leave that in i can i because we can prefer that they not be there but it doesn't restrict them from being there so if somebody found a property you know in one of those areas and they applied, it can be considered. Yeah. Yep. Fair enough. Yeah. Right. So I think just changing the, the no, principal use permitted to a, a special use permitted would be fine with me. Mr. Mr. Chairman? A month ago, we were probably unanimous saying we want to see a special use and came back not as. So if we vote tonight mm -hmm. recommending mm -hmm. special use city council going to change your mind or are they going to or administration or are they going to come back and can't do anything well, it's the recommendation have, of the planning commission they have the authority to change it if they want to change it correct city council yeah. has the opportunity administration would present this as recommended from the planning commission correct but city council could change it if Absolutely. they wanted to change it they could. but something's not you know to me you know, it's unanimous twice yeah. And they still go against yeah, something's wrong. Uh, somebody's wrong, or not, or we're not communicating. So, uh, uh, so I guess the 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 in interest of not going around circles here. Um, I'd make a motion to recommend the uh, zoning ordinance sections. Sections. I'm not going to read all these sections. 138, 363, 382, 387, 427, 427, on and on and on. Um, with the exception that we want to see it as a special use. Support. Thank you. Okay, so that's a motion and a support. Any other discussion on that motion? I think we decided that the other items that came up 
we're okay with. I think that's the only, is, am I wrong? Is that the only, uh... No. Do we have to call it something, uh, like a conditional special use to differentiate it or something? I don't think, I think so. I don't think the ordinance Just provides for No. That. I'm gonna have to rewrite the ordinance. <laughs> okay. Any other discussion on that motion, then? Ms. Schlutel, could you call the roll, please? Smith? Yes. Patterson? No. Trotto? Yes. Buckler? Yes. Murad? Yes. Richardson? Yes. Kempner? Yes. Kapolansky? Yes. Thank you for all your work on this. I know this is a tough one. Okay. So we'll move on then. Next up we have the public hearing and adoption of the downtown master plan. Apparently this is not an important part. Yeah. I guess this not. We'll let the room clear out for a minute. Yeah. Nobody cares about the downtown master plan? <laughs> So moving on then to the public hearing and adoption of the downtown master plan. Yeah. Ms. Schlutow, do you want to introduce this item? Uh, I'd like to reference my September 18th, 2019 memo uh, regarding the adoption of the downtown master plan. Uh, in 2018, the Berkeley Downtown Development Authority contacted the Lakota Group to assist with the downtown master plan. Um, the task force was compiled of uh, DDA board members, DDA volunteers, city council members, city staff, and area residents uh, in order to uh, garner feedback for um, the, the development of this plan. Um, the Lakota Group presented their um, presented their draft plan to the Planning Commission on July 23rd. Um, there were some revisions and some recommendations that went through um, in the public input process through the Planning Commission as well as um, city residents. And um, they made a couple of modifications, um, including um, modifications to, the, to their parking section, their implementation section, things that the uh, Planning Commission had recommended. Uh, the City Council um, heard the same presentation, or heard the modified presentation on September 16th. Um, the, the Lakota group presented a, uh, a memo of all of the uh, modifications that they did to the plan between uh, July 23rd and September 16th that has been provided in your packet. It addresses all of the, uh, the comments that, that had been supplied to them from uh, Planning Commission, Board of Directors, City Council, and residents. Uh, per the Michigan Planning Enabling Act, uh, the Planning Commission has the authority to uh, adopt the downtown master plan as a sub-area uh, plan. Uh, this downtown master plan will serve as a pivotal reference component to the um, overall comprehensive community master plan, which um, we will be beginning uh, shortly. Um, Within the plan, there are four major goals that are outlined. Uh, these are meant as a guide for the decision-making uh, process uh, through the DDA. Um, they are not set in stone. They are not, um, there's not any rezonings or anything that's going to be decided upon that tonight. This is just the overall uh, adoption of the master plan and those goals. There was some confusion about that earlier. Um, the plan is available for viewing on the DDA website. Um, one of the key components or the key uh, recommendations, <coughs> excuse me, was um, in regards to the number of zoning districts that are in, um, in, in the DDA. Uh, currently there are six. Um, the master plan, uh, downtown master plan is proposing three. So this will um, hope to uh, make it a little bit easier for development in these areas if people know where where they are and, and what um, their overall goals and, and aesthetics should be. With that, I'll take any questions. I have a question. Yes. Um, Mr. Richardson? It's going to seem a little like a crazy question maybe, but uh, we've, we've heard the term mid-century modern so often. Uh, in connection with the uh, design guidelines, and then there's references to that term uh, in, in this document as well. Can you attempt the definition of that term? What is that t style of architecture 
really mean. I mean, <laughs> it's vague in my mind. It is vague. It is vague, and it, it's intended to be vague. It's, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it is a style, and it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's an architectural style that um, people want to see here. It's, it's, it's cleaner. It's got clean lines. Um, it's, it doesn't have any kind of residential um, components to it. You can definitely look at it and see that it's a, a commercial type or industrial type building. Um, these are the, this is the type of the aesthetic that has been um, discussed here with the design overlay guidelines. Um, but it is, it is vague in the sense that they wanted to afford a little bit more flexibility with any developers coming in and they can put, put a spin on it, I guess. Thanks. So this item is a public hearing. At this point, I would like to open it up to members of the public. I ask you to keep your comments to four minutes or less. The commission, excuse me, will not engage you in any discussion. And please also note your name and address for the record and on the sign-in sheet provided next to Council Member Gavin. Does anyone from the public wish to comment? Charles Terrell, 1209 Columbia in Berkeley. Uh, First off, mid-century modern is frosty freeze. Frosty freeze. Frosty freeze is the basic definition of mid-century modern. Uh, but beyond that, to the master plan, as you said, this is to be a sub-plan of the overall city master plan. So that is putting the cart before the horse. You need the overall plan and then the pieces that make it up. You don't start with a piece that makes it up and then try and fit the overarching master plan around the piece. The other piece of this is, I attended the council meeting and the presentation by the Lakota group. The, the gentleman doing the presenting from Lakota group was very reluctant to call it a master plan or a plan at all. He kept referring to it as suggestions not as a plan. And somebody sent me a link today to what constitutes a plan and what doesn't. Well, actually not what doesn't, it is what constitutes a plan uh, per the extension. I think it's a Michigan State Extension document. And this does not meet the criteria to actually be a plan. So if the people who wrote it don't think it's a plan. If it doesn't meet the state criteria for a plan, if it's to be a subpart of a plan that doesn't exist, I urge you tonight to not adopt this at all and not recommend it on to council for adoption. Thank you. Other comments? Hello, Ryan Gazan. Um, I live on Kipling in Ber here in Berkeley. Um, from my understanding, a master plan is more of a guideline. It's not necessarily a concrete requirement for the community. It's a guideline. We hope that businesses within a master plan or even within a downtown master plan fit this guideline, but it's not concrete that written in stone that they that they have to we use it as a guideline that businesses should look like this but they don't necessarily have to and we'll have plenty of opportunity during the master plan process i am curious if the master plan and the downtown master plan were the same company that's charged at the lakota group was the downtown master plan I am curious if the city master plan is the same is the same the same people, and uh, I, I guess that's really it. Just just my my observations. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so normally I'd go to the end of the comments, but just to kind of address some of those things that have been said so far, you're correct that the downtown plan and any master plan is a set of guidelines that we implement those guidelines through changes to the zoning ordinance, which is the, the legal framework we have to use to implement the standards that we would like to implement in the city. Um, 
So Mr. Trell's comments about suggestions are, are somewhat valid. These are suggestions in the sense that we would need to go a little bit further and change the zoning ordinance if we want those suggestions to actually take take place. Um, and then just to briefly answer that, we have a different consultant for the master plan. Other comments? Good evening. Joe Nowitzki, 385612 Mile. I'm a business bu building and business owner here in Berkeley. Um, I'm finding it really difficult to swallow having five lay people tell me how to run my business, what it should look like, what it should feel like, what it should be like. That proponent of this particular overlay and guideline is driving me insane. If I take, if you take it professionally and you, and you take a look at these, I'm gonna, Mr. Smith, if you had 300 pages to go through before you took a commission, competitively speaking, would you take the commission? Think about it. The answer in this by body is no. I'd walk away. I walked away from no by 20 years ago and never looked back. They're horrible to deal with. You're making that this community. 300 extra pages for your design professionals to work with, and then we're responsible to talk to five lay people and ask them permission to do our jobs. They have nowhere near the credential that we provide this community and our clients with, and yet we're, stand, we're asked to stand behind them. It's insanely incorrect. I have a very strong objection to that one. I want to make one other point clear. 70 some percent of us voted for this marijuana thing. We bought our buildings next to commercial p properties. You didn't make us buy those buildings. I own one. I can't pick my neighbor. If I chose to buy next to a commercial property, it can be anything. Frankly, when I bought my house, it was a spring factory. It was horrible. They moved. Thank you, Lord. But I didn't have a choice about that. When you buy next to a commercial property, you take that risk. We let the general population, not the few, determine what our, what our direction should be. That's all I gotta say tonight, thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? I get a turn too. If he gets to talk, I get to talk. I'm Ann Nowitzki, 3856 12 Mile Road. I just wanted to say that I did look at the master plan, all 157, I think, pages of it. And like he said, when you add the 115 pages for the guidelines, God, I'm tired. And I haven't even started to design yet. But anyway, I did want to point out that the map in the master plan is uh, labeled incorrectly. It has uh, Edwards, St Edwards Street wrong. There's no prairie. According to the map that's in the master plan, prairie doesn't exist. Hmm. They should correct that if they're gonna plan around it. So the only other thing I really wanna say is there's so much detail in the master plan, it's almost as if we don't need professionals anymore in Berkeley. They've designed it all for us. They're giving away free design work. Does anybody here know who is doing the free design work for Berkeley? For the uh, facade 50-50? Reduce, 13 people have had 50-50 redos done in Berkeley, and you get free design and or free, I don't know, 50% paid by the city. But the city's giving away free design work. That's competition with designers in the city, and I wanna know if the city has someone on staff doing that, or if they're paying someone to do it, or is this uh, somebody just doing it? So. That's an answer for maybe the EDI. Yeah. Okay. No. Um, Berkeley's already walkable. That's another thing. All this walkable stuff in the um, master plan, we're forcing people to walk. We're not creating walkable spaces. There's a difference. We already walk in Berkeley. Anyway, that's uh, the master plan gives too many details and too much power to the DDA. You folks already are able to do the deciding 
on zoning. We don't need that much detail from a master plan, from guidelines, and from a whole nother layer of government, which this is an awful long way to go for a master plan, really. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Anyone else? I don't know if this is just about the master plan, but I just want to make a comment about the, the marijuana so, entryway for marijuana. Um, so this is just the master plan public hearing. The marijuana public hearing has been closed. I'm sorry. Um, if you want to get your comments to council, though, you, you could email or write them, and um, they would be included in that correspondence. Anyone else with comments on the master plan? This is somewhat new to me. I'm sorry, my name is Jeff Hartfield. I'm looking at the master plan and I see my parking lot in the master plan today on Facebook. <laughs> um, again, I'm with Joe. I'm not real happy with five people telling me what I should and shouldn't do with my building or whether or I want to paint it or redo something. And I don't know exactly where this is going and I just think it's too much control of the DDA. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. I won't even get into the eminent domain. I mean, that scares me. That totally scares me. And that's about all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Anyone else that would like to comment on the master plan? Hi, I'm Linda Hartfield his better half. Um, yeah, a lot of phone calls, a lot of concerns the last couple of days um, to this master plan, and um, my leagues are calling us saying, you guys are selling the parking lot. Oh, you're selling your business. And it's like, what are you talking about? Um, so this master plan that you referred to and everybody's referred to is not even on the books yet or whatever, but it seems to me it got pushed through or it's getting pushed through. And the business, no, I shouldn't say the business, um, the property owners on 12 Mile that own the businesses aren't happy with it. And I don't think we're going to stand for it. We're going to start, you know, taking some action on it personally. But thanks for the phone calls to whoever's, and, you know, f people think that we're going out of business now. And it's just an empty parking lot. It's not an empty parking lot. And if you want Hartfield Lanes out of there, then, you know, maybe there should be some other ways of doing it. But right now, it looks like we're selling or we've already sold. So I don't know, I don't understand all this master plan stuff. All I know is what I'm reading and that you have control and you can take control over our property and sell it um, is, is very concerning. So on the record, Linda Hartfield, Hartfield Lanes, I disagree with it. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. I will close the public hearing then on the downtown master plan. We did get a couple correspondence related to this as well, but I'd like to um, try to address the comments from the audience at this point. Um, so we talked just very briefly about what a master plan is and is not, and specifically in response to Ms. Hartfield's comments. Um, this does not dictate what could be done with a particular piece of property. It, it provides suggestions and guidelines of, of how a property might redevelop at some point in the future or how we would expect any, any property in the city to redevelop in the future if it were to come forward as a redevelopment. The suggestions that are written into the master plan would have to be included in the zoning ordinance in order for those standards to be enforceable. Um, at this point, and Ms. Lutow can address the, this if, if I may be out of line in this comment, but at this point, I don't think we're planning on writing any sort of redevelopment standards for Hartfield Lanes into the zoning ordinance. Um, so this is just a concept of, of what could happen on a larger parcel in the city. Um, we don't have a lot of large parcels, and, and yours was used as an example, I think, because of the size. Um, but it certainly doesn't dictate what you can and cannot do with your property at, at this point at all. That would have to, be, have to be in the zoning ordinance and require um, 
a, a, a public hearing before this body, notice of uh, notification of you and the surrounding properties it would require two considerations by city council. So it would be it would be a quite involved process. Um, so that's just to address that. I, I just want to make sure you understand that we're not suggesting that the property be redeveloped in a certain way at this point. That would only be if, if redevelopment was something that you wanted to pursue. Um, then as far as some of the other comments, I know there were several comments related to the design guidelines and the design review board. That's a separate item. Um, so right now we're just looking at the downtown master plan. Uh, the free design question, that's something that's offered by the DDA. So it's not something the Planning Commission has any purview over, or at least I, I don't have specific knowledge of who's doing those design services at this point. Um, I, I think that should generally address most of the comments. Ms. Shluta, did you have anything to add to that? No, I would I would agree with everything you said. The the downtown master plan is is just a guideline. It's just a a, a, a document that shows what can happen, um, but it is in no way meant to dictate what you can and cannot do with your property. That would have to be um, uh, approved and enacted in, within the zoning ordinance, which again would require the public hearings and 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 the like, which which we're not doing here. Correct. Uh, Kristen. Uh, yes, Mr. At Ricciardo? the DDA meetings, the majority of the people that have brought together facade grant information that I've seen have had their own architects and their own people involved in it. They've never had anybody specifically brought in from the city that I know of. And I've only been following them for like a year, but I've never seen anybody actually show up from the city or from a special person provided by the city for these facade grants. Okay. So isn't it a grant program? It is a grant program. You bring your proposal to them, they offer, you know, do you tell them it costs them? And the, is that in here or is that it's not in here? And I don't want to go back and forth with the I, audience. I don't know where it no. says it at, but I know that I've been to several DDA meetings and I've never once seen anybody bring anything in but somebody's architectural drawings to show them what they're planning on doing. The majority of them are, we plan on putting up a sign and here's our sign. And it came from a sign manufacturer or a sign, develop, sign uh, provider who's doing this. Or we're planning on repainting and cleaning it up. I think the... I forgot which the automotive shop over here was another one that was a good example of it. They just came in, they brought up their proposal of we want to repaint, we want to redo our facade, and they split the difference basically is what it came down to. I've never seen anybody come in and say, go to the city and get some design services. I mean, I, 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 that wouldn't be the position of them, and I've never seen, not seen that yet. So I'm not sure where it says they have design services, but. So no, it was. Okay, so I don't want to, uh, to go back and forth, but thank you for that insight because I know that you're the liaison to the DDA board, so that's an important piece that otherwise Loosely most used of term. us <laughs> are, are missing. Um, but that would be a question, I think, for the larger city administration because we don't really, really know exactly what the, the DDA offers in terms of design services. Um, okay. So with that, uh, we've been asked this evening to adopt the master plan. There were a number of changes that were made since we last saw it in response to some council concerns. So those have been outlined for us. Does anyone have any comments, questions? Go ahead, you had your hand no, up. No, you go first. Okay. Mr. Richard. Well, um, first, I, I can't resist making a brief comment. Uh, every time this body circulates anything of a speculative nature, uh, every time we circulate a, a conceptual document or an idea document, in this day and age it gets on social media and it gets translated into some kind of Stalinist plan to seize private property and erect buildings that nobody wants. And I understand people are busy and pressed for time, don't always pay attention, but I really wish. <laughs> people would just read things more carefully to understand what it is they're looking at, what it is and what it isn't. We, we almost have to preach that, I think, because if you can't have it both ways. You can't have a community involved with these decisions without circulating ideas, you know, which may or may not come to fruition. Uh, you can't have a dialogue if people are going to take what you put out there as some kind of hostile act. And, and I just, it's a two-way street. Dialogue is a two-way street. So that's my comment on that. Now, I do have a question about what we're doing here tonight. 
Um, I do understand that, um, you know, we legally, under state law, are, for a variety of reasons, required to have a community master plan. Would that be correct? Th this is a downtown master plan. It's been described as a component of an overall master plan. So would that mean that what we're doing here tonight is not, we're not approving anything which meets a legal requirement. This is more of a preliminary step toward fulfilling eventually the requirement for a community-wide master plan. Is, is that a proper interpretation of what we're doing tonight? Yes, the the um, the state mandates that we have a community master plan, Correct. and but we not are a downtown master plan. A right? downtown master plan is not a, a requirement by state law. It is um, something that is encouraged through best practices, redevelopment ready, uh -huh. um, pr best practices. Um, but it is not a state requirement as such. So, in in as the as the master planning process for the community unfolds. Um, this particular element could conceivably be modified um, without going through a, a kind of a legal process to change uh, a master plan such as you'd have to do um, uh, with the community plan. Well, there, right? there are still processes for, for amending a document such as this because it has been adopted. So if there were going to be amendments to this document, as it stands, as a city it, document, as okay. a city document, then right. there there are amendment processes okay. that would have to go through. Okay. The the overall community city of Berkeley entire uh, master plan is going to be starting uh, relatively soon, and this will be a component of that, and it will be a, a reference document as moving forward. If there are instances where the community master plan differs from the downtown Berkeley master plan, then the community master plan will will prevail. So it's, it's my understanding though that this would be incorporated into the master plan and it we would. would not anticipate any differences between the two. We don't anticipate, no. But if there were something that comes, of, comes from having a different um, uh, contractor or having a different um, vendor look at our master plan and see that there might be um, alternative um, goals or alternative um, steps to move forward, then the community master plan would prevail. Ms. Buckler. Okay, so I have a couple of uh, comments and responses. First, it, it's a, I, I think we've said this, but all master plans are merely fluid blueprint, blueprints for moving forward. They are not ordinance. Ordinances are written. The master plan guides us, and they're based on a view in time with some forward look to it, but it can't anticipate everything. I mean, if we looked 10 years ago or 15 years ago, we wouldn't have seen, you know, some of the housing downturns, communities who had master plans who were looking forward and then they get kind of wiped out in the 2008, 2010 frame time, you know, framework. Um, so it, it's, it's really meant as a guidance document, but it doesn't prevent us from making a decision on a piece of property where it could be right for the community now, like, you know, the marijuana establishments. Those were not anticipated 10 years ago. So. All right, if that came up in the mid-cycle of the master planning process, it wouldn't be addressed. So it's just one of those things. Secondly, um, the comment that we shouldn't start with the downtown master plan, we should start with the larger master plan. Um, when I was chair, and, I, and I've said for years, it, you know, it's convenient to start with a master plan and then go in a certain order, but you know what? As long as you're capturing all the flags, it's okay. Our downtowns are unique enough that they warranted a special look. And there are challenges to our downtowns in some of the decisions that have been made over time. Some of the things are great. Like, I like a bowling alley downtown. I like your bowling alley. I like to go. It's great. I have cold beer. Play, play, you know, bowl. It's fun. But there's some other challenges to the downtown that really uh, interrupt kind of the flow of a downtown. And there's some changes and, you know, like things that have come up about bike sharing and ride sharing and, you know, new restaurants pop up and creatable districts and things like that. But there... So it's, it's, 
it's good that we had uh, the DDA had the resources to make this happen because then we can focus on the Woodward district and the 11 mile district and the, you know, the, the gateway districts and some of the residential areas and the parks and the green space, which is a lot. That's a, it's a, it's a lot to do. A master plan is a huge thing to go through. So now we have a piece and I do want to address the residents who feel like this was sprung upon them. This was not sprung upon. In fact, there's people sitting in the audience whose pictures are in this document because they were at the design input sessions. And there were multiple design input sessions. And this has been on our agenda for, I want to say, 18 months or 24 months. We have mentioned it. This is a multi-touch process. So I feel bad if you feel like this has sprung upon you, but it was not. So it requires everybody to stay involved and vigilant. And I think the city has done a very good job on its social media on getting the word out and through the, the normal publication process. So I think it's very unfair to suggest that because you did not pay attention to it, that it happened in a vacuum. It did not. There were very well attended sessions, people coming and going and engaging and back, and there was multiple of them and lots and lots of touches on this. So, um, and it doesn't, like Mr. Richardson says, <coughs> it's not rezone your property, it doesn't, change your property, it doesn't put your property up for sale, and in all fairness, I mean, there aren't that many large parcels. It was merely a, what happens if, you know, this parcel were to come up, what could you do with it in a downtown context? What could you imagine it to be? Buildings don't live in perpetuity. Businesses don't live in perpetuity as much as we would like them to, so they change, and we have to think about that vision. Um, and that somebody has a bigger vision and a bigger paycheck than me that can make it happen. So other than that, um, and I think the um, the uh, the document with the changes are in it, I, th I think it's it's good. I, I, I would have liked to see the master plan first, but we didn't have the resources or the timing or the budget. Like we can only do that when we're afforded the budget by city council for somebody to guide us through the process and the timing had to be right so that the DDA had it. So it's a good document. It, I, I don't think it restricts design in the downtown. We can restrict design in the downtown and um, this document doesn't add or delete from that. It just kind of more concisely puts an idea of what, what Berkeley could look like. So that's it. Thank you. Mr. Smith. Uh, at the last city council meeting, our new planning consultant who is going to be developing our master plan, apparently they're hired now. I can say it's Carlisle Wortman, yes. right? Yeah, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's only been a week or so. You know, it says here to adopt, we're here to adopt it. I'd like to hear some input from them if they have any. I don't want them to rewrite it but I'd like to know in their vision of, 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 of our master plan, their intentions, and I know they're just starting, and it's a long process. But I'd really like to hear something from them. I would hope that they read this or they will be reading this and digesting this shortly. I'd like to give it a little time and see what comments they may have. Okay. Sorry about putting a stick in the spokes, but uh, I would really like to hear their input. Are you envisioning that they're gonna come up with different recommendations? No, no, I... Because I, I wouldn't expect them to, knowing no, that No, I wouldn't it. either, but I, don't, I, I said, I don't want them to rewrite it, I, but I'd like to hear what they have to say about it. Okay, other comments from this side of the table? Well, <clears throat> having uh, been part of the previous city master plan, again, this is a guideline. It's kind of, you know, it's funny that they call it a master plan, but really it's a guideline. It's, it's you know, we had, I think, five catalytic projects in our master plan mm -hmm. from 2006, I think, when it was and adopted. And one almost happened. One almost <laughs> happened, yeah. So basically none happened. Adding zero. Yeah, so, you know, these are nice to have because they give you a lot of ideas, a lot of statistics. That, to me, that's the big thing that come out of these, you know, when you look at 
what the population of Berkeley is like. And, and so those are some of the things that'll be saved for when we do our, our uh, full master plan. Uh, for the for the rest of the community, like Ms. Buckler mentioned, this is some things that we don't have to do now. We can focus a lot more on some of the other things, or our consultant can, and as we work with them. But uh, yeah, I'd like to see what our consultant has to say, but I don't think it's going to delay me from saying we should just adopt this. You know, I mean, it's uh, it's pretty comprehensive. You know some interesting, you know, case studies that they've they've pointed out that uh, were quite, quite interesting. One being resurrect the Berkeley Theater. Yeah. I think a lot of people would love to see that. I know 20 years ago when I was on the DDA, we were talking about how we could get that back to a theater. So, so anyway, but, uh, you know, it's guidelines. It's it's not etched in stone. It's just it's a vision. You know of what what we could become or things that we could do in the future. So. Anyone else? I mean, the only comment I got is I really like some of the ideas in here. But the problem is how do you implement them? <coughs> it doesn't fall onto us to do that. No, it no. it falls no. on, on <coughs> property owners and developers and <coughs> designers to take some of what's in here and I mean some of this and they do have the implementation action strategy and some of this does involve us <coughs> yeah. um, consolidating the zoning districts yeah. updating the parking standards those are all things that we can certainly help do um, but you're right a lot of specific vision projects would I mean, fall to people who are able to to I do mean, that two things here that are most important is business attractions and retainage but if you look at some of the things that actually need to be done to retain the businesses and uh, bring in new businesses, like improving the streetscape and signage and those kind of things, and parking is another one, those are what it takes to retain these businesses. And I mean, if you look at our community, we lost one major business last two weeks ago in our yeah. city. And I mean, th these are things that I think we need to start pushing to have done. I'm not saying we need to tear down buildings and do things like that, but I think we need to start having something happen. But I have no ability to do that myself. And the DDA is a big part of that too. And when it comes to streetscape elements and things like that, I mean, we can change the zoning ordinance. So to require some of those elements be put in if a site is redeveloped, but those are things we could look at. I, I agree. I want to see some of, I want to see this plan generally implemented. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want it to sit on a shelf. That's not I mean, why I, we had the plan done. I mean, it's like the little things like by the little pop-up parks and things like that. Those are things yeah. that draw to the city. Yep. Agreed. And I, I, I really like some of their ideas in here. So it's a good plan, I thought. <coughs> Kempner or Mr. Patterson, any I comments? I think my comments have been addressed. I OK. Um, I, I do like a lot of the ideas. It, it's a guideline, so it's just kind of a, a place to shoot. Um, there's some spots in parking that I, I don't know um, can can be met in their ideal time frame. Um, but, you know, there's nothing that holds us to having to implement these the exact way that they suggest. So, I'm all right with it. So, so I, I intend to vote to adopt it. Uh, I uh, generally support the vision that's outlined in here. Um, uh, there's some parts of it that are a little, it's, people have been complaining it's too detailed. I, I think there are some parts of it that are, could be more detailed. For example, the discussion of parking, I think, is a little disjointed. I'm frankly very surprised we didn't get any comments here tonight about uh, about parking. Um, but um, we had one letter. Uh, you know, there is. I, I take this as a as a uh, as a document which helps administration prioritize projects and prioritize considering projects. And I agree with the prioritization and the types of projects that, that are described in here. Um, I, think, I think they are in, 
I think the vision is, is the kind of vision that will help this community uh, uh, maintain its uh, excellence. And um, there's nothing in this that's going to execute itself. It's not a self-executing document. We have to uh, mm -hmm. uh, keep plugging away at, uh, at these things. So this is only preliminary and my, my only wrink the only wrinkle I have is you know we have an overall planning process that we're just starting on and I, I just want to make sure that it's easy to integrate this uh, this piece of it into the overall that's that's why I asked the initial question and I think that was one of the components that was presented when the master plan the overall master plan went out to bid that that was one of the things that would be required of whatever consultant that we hired, that this would have to be integrated into the overall plan okay. in a way that makes sense and is comprehensive and fits within the vision for the city as well. Fair enough. Um, I, I'll just say that I, I wasn't happy with how this document turned out. Um, I think it did involve a great deal of public input. And I think that was important, and that was a good guide for how we can can um, run the master plan process in general. I do think it presents a good vision and reflects the values of the community, um, and I would be happy to adopt it this evening if anyone wanted to make a motion. I, can, I make a motion to adopt the downtown master plan as presented. I'll second. Any comments on that? Ms. Schuster, could you call the roll, please? Patterson? Yes. Trotto? Yes. Buckler? Yes. Murad? Yes. Richardson? Yes. Kepner? Yes. Smith? Yes. Kapolanski? Yes. Hey, do you guys need a break or do you want to just keep moving? Just keep, just keep, just keep okay. going. All right, so next up we have discussion of parking regulations within the city. Ms. Schluto. I'd like to reference my September 18th, 2019 memo. Um, so parking is something that we've been discussing here um, amongst, this, amongst this ourselves here and um, uh, with the city staff as well. And so there are a couple of things that um, as we move forward in <coughs> looking at some ordinance amendments uh, pertaining to parking that I'd like to, to discuss with, with the Planning Commission. Um, number one is, um, Parking for these uh, marijuana businesses. Um, I know we just went through the the public hearing aspect of this, but um, in order to make sure that we are regulating these businesses for the type of parking that we want or the the maximum requirements, um, we want to make sure that we have um, a standard um, that that works for for everything. So. Um, uh, but currently, the zoning ordinance does not specify or uh, specify certain requirements for parking. Um, <laughs> section 138-219 does permit the zoning officer to assign parking requirements um, for any businesses or any uses that are not specifically listed, um, provided that they are in accord with the use considered similar in type. Um, so I bring up the the example of the city of Ferndale. They per have. Uh, permitted three medical marijuana businesses within the city, and they opt to regulate um, those businesses by retail and medical use, uh, both of which are one space per 250 square feet of gross floor area. Um, while the city of Berkeley uh, could not regulate marijuana businesses by the same model because uh, medical office and retail have um, different parking requirements, I think it would be a good point of discussion to determine how this body would like to regulate uh, parking if you want to specify it as marijuana use in general or there are separate um, uses for marijuana grow houses versus the retail versus the provisioning versus micro businesses so that's that's a point of discussion that um, that I would like the Planning Commission to review tonight um, I'll just, I'll just keep going. Oh, okay, that's keep a, a, going. Or we can, we can discuss first. you want to take them one at a time? We can take them one at a time. Um, I guess my only overall comment, and I don't know how the rest of the commission feels, but I don't think I want to look at the parking um, ordinance piecemeal, like use by use. I would like to tackle the whole thing at once. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I understand your need direction on these marijuana uses because they're a current issue we need to address. Um, 
but I don't think it makes sense to add another parking category. Nope. I don't know. I agree. Plus, as a, as a think, special think, land use? I, well, and oh, I, for parking. And I, think I, I understand for parking, but because it's a special land use, can't we, or can we override that or no? No. 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 Okay. That's right. That's <coughs> I don't know then what we do. Well, nobody, nobody in Michigan really has much experience with these kind of licenses, right? Right. Right. Um, so part of me says, let the let the ordinance officer designate parking, and and, and as an ex <laughs> you know, as sort of a, a walking experiment, and uh, and and then we. <laughs> eventually maybe create uh, requirements based on experience. I mean, for now, we'd be taking a shot in the dark, wouldn't we? Uh, we oh. would, and it's my understanding that the provisioning centers, as they operate now, as medical provisioning centers, um, operate kind of like a, a pharmacy. Mm -hmm. you're, you're in, you're out. It's not that you're hanging around for a long, long amount of time. Yeah, um, you treat it more of a retail use. I, I would think it's Well, I, I would think that each of those five or six Right. Categories could fit into something else, yeah. Self, yeah. Yeah. rather exactly. than have a whole other you know, for marijuana. A testing facility is like a lab. lab. Absolutely. Yeah. So, what happens in a lab? A grow, it's a little bit different because I don't think you have hundreds of people well, there but working. Maybe that's like a warehouse. Yeah, know. exactly. Industrial. Exactly. Okay. More like an industrial use. And uh, what are the other businesses? There's. Uh, processing right. what are we missing just pro which would be like a manufacturing right industrial type business i would and assume. then the other w one is transport but we don't have to really because okay. it's just somebody coming picking up from true but we've so we've made the requirement or at least on the wish list that it has a minimum of 20 jobs mm -hmm. so we've granted they'll work different shirt different shifts and whatnot so we have to make accommodation that's a lot. I think we have mm -hmm. a lot of small businesses here in Berkeley that yeah. have like three and four employees yeah. and run full time. You yeah. know, yeah. retail. Full time business, would be yeah. retail. Uh -huh. yeah. That's a lot of people that need to put their cars on there. Our security guards. <laughs> so I think that's kind of convoluted direction we've given you on that. But I think we're we're not interested in adding a specific parking standard for marijuana facilities. We'd like to fit it within our current standards. Yeah, and the zoning officer Excuse me. Uh, I'm fully comfortable uh, moving forward in that in that realm, but I wanted to get the direction from the planning commission, given that this is something that we're moving forward with. Um, so, does anyone object to that? No. I mean, when it's coming before us as a special use, if I mean, if we're looking at that and we go, "Hey, I actually think, you know, it should fall under this one instead of that one," we can. We could have that discussion. We can have that discussion at that time if, for some reason, we thought you know, yeah. it was being designated in a wrong but category or something yeah, for but, parking. But the applicant has to know, too, what <laughs> parking standards they're trying to meet. That's true. In advance, yeah. So in we advance. Would, so. We would be delaying people if we all of a sudden said, you need 20 spaces, not seven. And I mean, I can't imagine. I mean, I'm just like, if something happened and it seemed so outrageous we would have time to correct it. I don't imagine that that would ever be the case, but. And if we're looking at parking standards comprehensively, we can talk about some of these issues as, mm -hmm. as we're looking at that, so maybe there, there isn't any of that confusion. Does that make sense? It does, absolutely. Okay. And that kind of leads into the next two and three on, on my memo here. Um, so if, if I'll just move right forward. So uh, number two, um, modifications of parking requirements during site plan review. Um, currently, the city of Berkeley does not have that provision um, in its ordinance where the planning commission has any kind of discretion with modifying the parking requirement. Um, this is something that I have seen in, in several other communities, and it, it works well. Um, I haven't seen a case where there has been any kind of negative or backlash to it. What happens is, is if there's a particular parcel where maybe there isn't um, a, enough space or there isn't enough accommodations, it, it can force the property owner, the developer, the architect to think outside the box, to think creatively about how, how to um, service the amount of people that are gonna be coming into, into their facility while also um, you know, adding, uh, um, I know you have the, the 
I know you have the requirements or have the modification for the bike racks, but they could add to that, or they notice that if they put into um, uh, an in lieu parking fee that they could uh, modify their parking spaces a little bit. They think about their use, they think about the property, they think about how it works with the city, the city overall rather than just that particular parcel. And I gave you a couple of um, options here of uh, the way things have been um, written in other communities. Um, I use the example of Lyon Township because that's one that I had worked at previously, and um, this one was uh, used quite quite frequently, and there was never any any backlash or any any hiccups with any of the commercial buildings that that used this modification. Um, but there's, a, there's is also a very blanket statement. The Planning Commission has the authority to modify based on sound evidence. That's, that's all that, that is required. The City of Ferndale does allow for the parking requirements to be reduced, and they list um, five items here um, of meeting certain, uh, the applicant needs to meet these certain factors in order for them to be considered for a parking modification. So the, if the Planning Commission does determine that they want to look into uh, adopting an ordinance such as this that would uh, allow them to modify the parking requirements, these are two options that they could, um, could, could reference and look to. Thoughts on that? Well, anytime you talk about reducing parking requirements around here, you're uh, it's like juggling a, a live hand grenade. Uh, so, but um, philosophically, as uh, anybody who remembers anything I have to say about it, I, I'm not a parking maven. I, 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 I am very much uh, uh, in favor of controlling the available parking. Um, I would lean toward the more detailed um, Criteria. I'm, I'm not sure it's going to be this exact five criteria. We have to come up with our own, I think. But I, I think it's just a question of objectivity, fairness, notice to the community, uh, what the ground rules are, instead of just saying, oh, did you hear at the meeting the other day they knocked, knocked that requirement down for that business, uh, and we didn't, we weren't aware of it. Uh, I, I don't want those kind of scenarios, and I. I don't really think it'd be fair to the community to to, to, to approach to approach the problem that way. In our particular community, where things are just so tight, you know, that's just my opinion. I think we had two examples last month. Um, one was our doing um, of the 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 um, art gallery, you know, for their uses five or six parking spaces may be right. But if someone came in with a retail that square footage, it may not fit. Now, we don't control the future, but I think we may have caused an issue for the future. But on the other hand, um, the homeowner or the, the, the builder who wanted to rezone uh, part of his property, we all, I think, and again, I don't remember if it was unanimous or not, uh, thought that by giving, you know, rezoning or, or by giving away the 20 feet, whatever that giveaway is, you could create plenty of parking spaces for those businesses to the north. Well, city council didn't see it that way. And uh, honestly, if someone laid down a piece of paper and tried to lay it out, I don't know if they're not going to gain that many spots capturing those other 40 feet or whatever the numbers were. So so we, we kind of had two examples. Um, uh, last month of parking issues. You know, council sent a very clear message on that second one that, no, we want more parking. So I don't think reduction of parking, we all talk about that, but I think that's a very clear message. Council, um, that in a lot of locations, that's not that's not something that you folks want us to pursue. Right? <laughs> I'm not putting you on the spot, sorry. But, um, so we gotta think about that as we rewrite these. Ms. Um, I was looking at some other cities as well as I was going through this list to see which other ones. Um, and and I, I do think it's important to be able to have some ability to be flexible for a situation. Um, 
And there were a number of other ones that had a percentage th threshold, like up to 10% could be waived. I'd, I'd be much more comfortable if there was some wording like that. So, you know, nothing get, everybody knows like the worst case scenario that could be waived. Um, but parking is, is a it's a touchy subject. <laughs> um, but I, I do like the idea of having some flexibility, but more like Ferndale with a percentage limit. Ms. Schluto. I just want to address the, the parking modification is not something that would be instilled in every single development. It would have to meet certain criteria and it would be at the discretion of, discretion. The, of the planning commission, of right. course. Mr. Murad. I think the master plan we just adopted has a lot of suggestions in there about parking. So we need to look at that too, because they've done, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think they did, they did some parking analysis and <coughs> captured some numbers as part of that. Yeah, so they did. You know, the difficulty with parking is that sometimes of the day it's totally underutilized and then there can be three hours in a day where there's not enough, you know. Well, right, but you don't want to park. Right. A sea of empty parking 80% of the right. time. Right, yeah, you look at these, you know, like the big shopping malls. Yeah, that are only you know. full of Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah, between Thanksgiving and the end of the year during the holidays, yeah. you know, so, you know, but that's what they have to plan for. So that's the difficulty. In, in right, parking. well, the, so. the shopping malls, right, that's a, everyone's probably driving to the mall. Yeah. I mean, there's limited bus service, so um, and, and, that might be a little bit And different. we've got to, you know, look at what's happening, what's going to happen in the next 10, 20 years. Exactly. Big question With, with, mark. with yeah. driverless cars and things like that. There's a daily and, and a weekly and thing about yeah. parking utilization, but yeah. a business goes out, a new business comes in that's much right. less intensive or much more intensive. More intensive, exactly. Or even less. I mean, it just yeah. changes the whole dynamic. Yeah. And we can't predict that. Right. No, no. But, you know, I mean, you know, for, for places where people, you know, go to have dinner and, and they'll have a drink or two. A lot of people now, they're using, you know, Lyft or Uber. Yeah. So they're not going there and parking their car for two, three hours while they're there, you know. So you got to take some of those things into consideration. Miss mm -hmm. Gunther? When I look at their, the DDA's map, that they, their parking utilization rates, the one thing I was struck with is our restaurant parking standard is probably pretty good because all of because it was at six o'clock at night and if i look all of the fairly full lots are all right by restaurants mm -hmm. so i mean i think still pe people at this point are still driving yeah. um but i think a lot of the a lot of the other above retail is where we're hoping to get some excuse right. to help yeah. fill in yep. that for hours <clears throat> okay so on the specific idea of modifying parking requirements, having the Planning Commission have the authority to do that. It sounds like the consensus is... I, yeah. Oh. yeah, I think, I, I mean, I like the idea of, like, maybe giving us some 10% leeway. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ms. But I still would like to see it as an overall parking package. I agree. Uh, yes, I, I agree. agree. Add this to our current parking. I want to no. see start to finish an entirely new, you know, draft ordinance that takes into consideration modernization as well as the realities of living in a small Pendon community like Berkeley and just see it all together. Because it all, like every piece leverages the other piece and then we can have our say. Yeah. That's kind of the things we want to see in it, the options we'd like to see. The, the percentage may work for me. I, I Looking at Ferndale's criterion, I would I would endorse the first three. I, I'm, I'm not sure we need the Criterion 4 and 5 um, in Berkeley. Transit. Um, for people who can't see it, transit and... Uh, transit and uh, a parking study well, by an engineer. We've that used that. Projects. Maybe if we put the 10%, I think if it was greater than 10%, then that parking study would, would be necessary. But if we put a limit on it like that, so just that's the sole criteria, a percentage? No, no, I like the idea of the Ferndale oh. standards, but I'm saying eliminating the parking study requirement. Okay. I guess I'd only be comfortable with that if we had a percentage reduction. 
If they were asking Fair for enough. a fifty percent reduction, I want to see the numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. That'd be bold. Yeah, it would, but <laughs> I want to, Aaron, I suppose, I assume you put this together, 20 pages of comparisons? I did. Yeah. That's pretty comprehensive. And I, I won't, I can't admit that I digested it all. But I could this, read it all for you if you like. <laughs> yeah, I'd like you to read it. No, uh, um, uh, there's a couple in here that are repeated and things, and that's fine. You know, I mean, but this is a very comprehensive list, and uh, thank you. It helps a lot, because picking communities like, Royal Oak, Plymouth, Ferndale, Claus, Oak Park. There's a lot of similarities mm -hmm. with our community. There's a couple that aren't some things, but um, but for the most part, that's a good list of similar communities. So, yeah, this helps a lot if I ever digest it. It's good nighttime reading material. No, <laughs> no it's good. Hide away from your child in the other room and go, Mom's working right now. <laughs> So I think the general direction is we want to see one big package, which we realize is going to take some time. Um, my feeling would be to try to uh, uh, consolidate and eliminate where we can in this list because it's just way too long. Oh, this was just a uh, just see what other communities are doing. Not not yeah. just with the other communities, but like I was noted, noting we had parking standards for convents and sororities and hospitals and things that Locksmith, are never going to be here. Rifle range, yes, I yeah, yeah. I saw those too. Those Locksmith, are easy Locksmith, easy changes. Locksmith, Locksmith <laughs> the rifle ranges yes. have completely different <laughs> needs. Um, so Some I guess of them can be consolidated. We're, and we would Locksmith. be open as a commission to. Ha if you want to do this at a work session where we all kind of sit down together and talk through some of these maybe question mark items, if you'd rather do it in formal meetings where you present to us kind of your draft, an idea of where we should go, we can start there. What, what does the commission kind of think on that? I always like myself, if I may, I like the formal meetings unless we're bogged down with things. True. Because we do get more of an audience that's on TV, yep. it's reviewable. Uh, but if we're bogged down and busy, by all means, a special meeting. Nobody wants to come here another night, but yeah, that's, I, what we're yeah. here, that's what we're here for. So, uh, but we can fit it in. I, I, I really like to do it re during a regular meeting. And the master plan, the downtown master plan, provides a lot of direction and information that we can use yes. to help update these. <coughs> one of the, one of the ideas in the downtown master plan is, is, is for parking districts, which I thought that was, Discussion was a bit on the vague side. I take I take the take it that those are um, shared either by voluntary or perhaps involuntary agreements, uh, uh, and then there's a formula for splitting the maintenance costs. And um, um, I'm wondering if that. I mean, we, that's an idea to be examined. I'm wondering if that should be part of our discussion. Uh, because, uh, you know, this is a big problem uh, in Berkeley. <laughs> and I don't think we have much to gain by just putting it off, putting off that discussion. We were talking about it 20 years ago when I joined the Planning Commission. Yeah. So. Uh, no, I would agree, though. I think seeing that idea explored as part of this update would be important to the commission. And, and it's a very, di I mean, <laughs> we have experience with just how difficult it is to achieve those on a voluntary basis. I'm, I'm not sure how it flies on, a, on an ordinance basis. I'd like to know more about it. I, w I wish there was a better discussion in the, in the document about it. And who would lead that effort? Would it be the DDA leading that effort? Would it be the city administration? I think it would be a joint effort. You know, we'd work together on that type of the endeavor. And I guess I'm interested in how the, the people that own their parking, how they feel about this concept. Because it's, it, well, it's a much, it, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's no point to even discuss it if they're like, no, I paid for this land, I'm not giving it up. Whereas if they were like, well, yeah, if it's cheaper for me, that's cool. It, very different processes. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm talking eminent domain here, though. Well, we, we would need it a lot. It wasn't necessarily yeah. clear. It was kind of like we're going to form a committee to talk about removing signs. And I'm like, 
I'm guessing this is with approval, but I don't know how don't how ask. those businesses feel. So we would not lead that effort, right? We would just need to be purview. If that was something that the city council and the administration intended to pursue, that would be an important piece of us updating the parking standards. Correct. Yes. I, I think it's appropriate for us to discuss it. Though. We could discuss it, but kind of if Lisa was saying, if there's no if there's no community and business and city council will to implement it, then. Right. We're well, kind of talking that's about That's the first part of the discussion. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> my second, my second, I would like it to be a work session because I think that makes it, like if we're scheduling a work session, then it's going to happen. And it, this is one of those things that's very easy to, I think, put on a back burner because like we're doing this, we're doing this, we have a master plan and the site plan comes up. I think if you're scheduling it specifically for a work session, you kind of like make it a, a somewhat of a focus. What do our agendas look like in the future? Would we have time to accommodate this on our regular agenda? We have, next month we have um, received an application for a special land use and a site plan for a daycare center. Um, La Salette, it looks like it's moving forward. Um, so those are two big site plans. Uh, and La Salette would be on next next month potentially? Mm -hmm. Yes. October. Okay, so. It won't I, be October. No. Yeah, we can't accommodate this on that meeting then. <laughs> but. But I can start doing some preliminary research and some preliminary discussions yeah, and have that, and we continue this as a discussion, a discussion item. item. Yeah, if for you, sure. Uh, whatever yeah. you accomplish, you know, mm -hmm. month to month. Yeah, yeah so we can I keep doing that and then do some, just some basic research and then we can come together where we have a little bit more meat to, to review. Yeah, and I would agree with Ms. Kempner. I don't want this to fall to the back burner. I don't want to add additional meetings to our schedule. If, if we can accommodate it on the regular, that would be my preference. But if, if this is going to kind of slide to six months from now, then I'd rather then I'd rather schedule the work session. Yeah. Any other comments on this, or do you need any additional direction, Ms. Shuta? No. Uh, my number three was just to um, start the discussion about updating the numerical parking requirements and and what my next steps were going to be. So it kind of feeds into into where we ended up anyway. So okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, then we'll move on to liaison reports. Does anyone have anything that they would like to report? I would. Okay. So from the chamber, October will be the uh, state of the city address. Looking up the date, but I don't have it right in front of me. I didn't. It's not in my notes. Uh, the other thing uh, <coughs> uh, with the chamber, there's they have a lot of different committees on the chamber, and a lot of times they're looking for volunteers to participate, and, and even for events like. Uh, you know, cruise fest night, selling t-shirts, or uh, art bash, they have a booth, and they sell tickets, and so they're always looking for volunteers for committees as well as at events, so if you want to get involved in something and you're not sitting on a, a board or something in the city, they'd really like it if you'd uh, reach out to either uh, Roseanne or Darlene, or just check the chamber website and uh, they usually have uh, like a, a sign up there you can do right there or email them if you're looking to to do some volunteering with the chamber okay yeah that's Thanks, it Mr. anyone else Carmel. mr richardson um, the City Council approved the uh, Berkeley Energy Efficiency Plan, which uh, the uh, Environmental Committee uh, helped to develop. Um, and uh, we're, uh, our next meeting is uh, uh, day after tomorrow at uh, 6.30 in the Public Safety Building. Good to know. Um, just a couple things from Council. Um, Mr. Smith already mentioned that the uh, Carlisle Wartman has been selected as the master plan consultant, so I expect that that process will get underway shortly. Um, they also had a presentation of the downtown master plan. There were some concerns noted. Um, generally, I would say it was well received. Um, and they also approved the second reading for daycares in the local business district, which I'm assuming is what we will be looking at. He's, he's been excited. Yeah. Um, is that that same guy? Anyone else? Anything to report? I unfortunately did not make the DDA meeting last month. I work ob okay. work obligations. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Any other comments for the good of the group from commissioners, staff, anyone? Um, 
I just wanted to note that I will be attending the Michigan uh, Association of Planning Conference in Kalamazoo this week. Um, so I'll be coming back with a lot of good, interesting uh, tidbits and research and analysis for, for everyone to enjoy. Ms. Kempner? Great. Um, for a while, we were getting our packets like a week before, and that was super awesome because it gave lots of time to go through everything. Mm -hmm. um, Friday starts to get a little hairy because there's not a lot of time, and it's weekend and all of that. So the sooner we can get packets, the better. <clears throat> Anyone else? No? Oh. Are we going to have a, a meet and greet, or Carla Wharton going to come in and talk to us soon? Yes, we're going to be doing a, a, a joint kickoff. Um, okay. They proposed a joint kickoff meeting with the uh, City Council and the Planning Commission. Um, we're working to get the contract finalized with Carla Wortman right now. Okay. How, do you, oh, go go ahead. Ahead. How do you anticipate finding dates for that? For the joint, joint me meeting? For the joint meeting? Um, for those of us that have other night meetings that they have to work around. Yeah, we're going to really try and work around and make sure that we, we find something that works, <coughs> works well for everybody. Um, but we haven't quite crossed that bridge yet. Sorry to interrupt, Marty. No problem. Go ahead. Uh, a couple things here. Uh, Huntington Woods, is uh, the, the flares are going up about 11-mile redevelopment. Uh, you know, and I think they had a meeting in the last week or so. Mm. Have we, has Berkeley had any input on that? It's our street too, so. Well, I think that comes uh, uh, with the um, the Tri-County Community, uh, not Tri-County, the Tri-Community Planning Effort that, that was underway. Mm -hmm. And one of the recommendations was to do some redevelopment along 11 Mile and do a road diet. So um, that was along the same vein of what they were, what they were okay. talking about. But we'll be part of that at some point also. Yeah, if, if they move forward, then we if would they be move moving forward, forward okay. with it as well. Um, and the next item, I had spoke to Ms. Schlutel about this. About two hours after last month's meeting, it dawned on me that the art gallery building has a shingled roof or a sloped roof. Half of the rainwater's spilling out on the right of way. And um, I should have caught that. We should have caught that. So I, I called her the next day or two, and uh, she contacted um, the applicant and it, could you fill us in on because that's a big deal there's a lot of water we don't that can't spill out mm -hmm. on the public right away so if you could fill us in on uh, where I can what you yeah. told me yeah no, I'd be happy to yeah so I reached out to the applicant and, and let him know of your concerns and made sure that that was something that he took under advisement um, he said he was gonna have to be he knew about it and he was going to be redirecting some of the storm water through the building um, to in order to drain and this was something that this is not my, air, engineering is not my, my expertise, so um, I made sure that he would put that um, very detailed in the construction and engineering drawings, so that way our, uh, not only our DPW, but our city engineer could look at them very thoroughly to make sure that it's done appropriately. And that's good, that's good. Sorry, I'm sorry I missed that. That's something that's so obvious, should have caught that. And then my, our other favorite project, project 11 mile, the Holly Market, any <laughs> news on that? <laughs> There is. I met with him this afternoon. He oh, has boy. returned from his uh, from his vacation. Um, so he and I are going to be working through the process of what he needs to do uh, moving forward. So we, we have a, a meeting scheduled next week to, to go over everything. He's going to get his his documentation and his um, his. Uh, I don't know where I was going with that, but he's we going don't. to get his, his information and, and, and what he needs to provide um, up to date, and then we're going to meet and go, go with our next steps. What, what, and what documentation might that be? Maybe? Well, just, just, just uh, documentation and, and correspondence that he had with, um, with city staff. Okay. Because as a rule, you know, the, the vinyl siding is a, and we all know this, mm -hmm. it's a residential material and not allowed in the business district. It says right there, black and white. So, uh, and I, you know, speculation whether or not he had a permit when he put it up, but just so we have all that. We as a body don't want to set a precedent uh, that, uh, that you put it up and then ask forgiveness. I mean, that's not, that's not what we like to see because now somebody else is going to do it, if that's the way it goes. So hopefully it works out well but um um so anyway thank you uh, just for clarification getting back to the art building um uh the dpw re automatically reviews uh 
safety engineering for commercial sites? Sometimes. If, if it's, so if it's, it's not warranted. automatic? Not automatically, no. Okay. Uh, under what circumstances do they, does it have to be a new development or? No, a new development or anything that would, um, that would trigger any kind of, um, uh, anything to do with the parking, anything to do with ingress, egress, anything that might affect um, how they, how they um, do their jobs. Um, if it was just a, a, a traditional reoccupancy and just moving forward, it wouldn't necessarily have to, to trigger anything, but because they're manipulating the drainage and how that's going to be, um, worked to to the city uh, storm sewer system we want to make sure that they are aware of of that right i was just wondering if technically speaking it's our job to take care of drainage issues i mean it's a good thing that we do but but i i, I want to make sure there's a process for doing that. as a body there's an we forget it <laughs> as a body uh, i mean as a city there's the building department the dpw department and us you know uh, and public safety and public safety but changing the patterns of of uh, of stormwater and i guess there's a big discussion at the last city council meeting about that but this particular one 50 percent of the roof you know it used to all flow through the building and directly in storm now 50 percent of it is going to the right of way i did there were no gutters on it no downspouts there's nothing mentioned but i we forgot or didn't bring it up Ultimately, someone will pick that up, and, and, and they are out in the building department. And even if there were gutters and downspouts, they can't dump they it They can't spill the grade. No, that's, grade. that's the situation, and y you want to catch it before mm -hmm. <laughs> they're, you know, they're getting ready to occupy, because they're going to have to cut up some floor and get back to something inside the building. It's not mm -hmm. going to be a simple thing to do. Okay. But there's enough people there that it gets, hopefully gets caught. And uh, here's a case where it was brought up, and the right people are notified, so it's good. Anything else? A motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Okay, have a good evening, everyone. Easy count on that side of that table.